and extend these public comment periods to all council committee meetings. There are also nine resolutions on public hearing tonight, all seeking vacancies for, or variances, I should say, for short-term rental properties. There are also 39 regular resolutions, 13 first reading bills, 24 second reading measures, and five ordinances on third and final reading. The most significant legislation tonight before the council is the budget ordinance and the property and tax levies on third and final reading, as well as the employee pay raise resolutions before the council. Mary John Cooper's operating budget is BL 2023-1867. Property tax levies are BL 2023-1868. The tax levies are unchanged from last year. The council committee met just, just a few minutes ago to come up with a substitute uh, um, budget for the, they never approved, appropriate the actual or pass the actual budget to the mayor sends in. They always want to make changes in it. We'll be talking about those in just a second. The proposed operating budget right now is a total of $3.2 billion. That's up 6.2% from the current Metro spending plan. Much of the increase will go to schools and additional public safety employees. The budget also provides a cost of a 4% cost of living adjustment and 3% step raises for some Metro employees, including Metro and National Public School employees, at least the class the, the non the non-classified employees. Those pay plans again are also uh, uh, resolution uh, resolutions are on tonight's agenda as well for final approval. The council always, I said, makes its own changes to a mayor's budget and amends it with a substitute budget. There's been conversation in the council about increasing the across the board pay raise to as high as 7% is recommended by the city's service, civil service commission. Indeed, there have been a large number for the, of amendments on various topics for the council to look at tonight. There were over 25 amendments that the budget and finance committee went over just before this meeting. They would raise pay anywhere from two to 5% more than that. Right now, it appears that at least the budget and finance committee is recommending on top of the 4% COLA or cost of living raise, there also be a 2% additional raise added on top of that for COLA. And then, and again, other council, other uh, Metro employees will receive in their early years in office a 3% increase uh, in the budget. Uh, the 3% increase in their pay, but those only goes on the first four, five or six years early on in their in their in their careers at Metro. There also are, are, are recommendations in the, for an allocation for the Barnes Fund money, more for WeGo, the arts, and schools, particularly in the in the security area, as well as more money to buy a significant building in the African American community, the Morris Building. That did get a negative recommendation in committee because the use of funds to do that is 4% fund. 4% fund is set aside of 4% of all the city's revenues, but it's to be used primarily and usually only for equipment purchases and also for building repairs, not for capital acquisitions. There also were potentially large budget cuts proposed in a few amendments in the parks, police, uh, sheriff, the DA, the courts. All those uh, amendments were either defeated in committee or were uh, uh, withdrawn by the sponsors. At the beginning of the meeting, the council will also consider a rather large number of Metro boards and commission appointments as well as positions for the council to fill by election. The most significant election tonight is one to choose a temporary state representative to assume the seat of the late Bill Beck, who recently passed away after suffering a heart attack. Former council member Anthony Davis is the person being most frequently mentioned to receive the temporary appointment, which will be filled for the rest of this legislature. It's a special election to hold the seat for the rest of the term. It will be held on August 3rd and September 14th. The urgency to fill the representative Beck's seat now is because there's supposed supposed to be a special session coming up of the General Assembly on gun issues been called by Governor Bill Lee, although that's supposed to be sometime in mid-August. That would be before the special elections take effect and the council members feel like there's a need to have that seat filled so that the people in that district have a voice and a vote on whatever comes up in the special session. There's also a local progressive organizer, Rain Hahn, who's also being mentioned for the seat, although it's unclear she'll be nominated tonight or she's taking out a petition to run for the seat in those special elections I talked about. Other council elections and appointments tonight include reappointments to the National Election to the Electric Power Board, the Parks Board, the Public Library Board, as well as two appointments to the Nashville Education Community and Arts Television Board, two appointments to the Metro Planning Commission, and one to the City Stormwater Management Committee. There are also nominations for the Council to consider to fill seats in the Cheatham County and Nashville Eastern Railroad Authority Boards. Recently, by ordinance, after considerable debate, the Council created the Nashville Music, Film, and Entertainment Commission. Tonight, the Council will begin to fill this new commission, considering eight different resolutions to confirm mayoral appointments or nominations from various industry groups. In some cases, there are more nominations nations than seats available, so the council will have to vote on who to select. Among many distinguished people who've been nominated includes country music superstar Garth Brooks, although we have not seen him here tonight to appear before committee. Under resolutions, RS 2023, 2247 would approve $4.3 million in supplemental appropriation to the Metro Sheriff's Department to cover overtime and security. That's going to be amended tonight to also include $6.5 million for schools for safety purposes. There's been several council meetings, committee meetings been held about this meeting with school officials, and this is a number they can't. 
to put both into this resolution and also into the budget coming up. Uh, three resolutions, RS 2023, 2249, 2250, and 2251 to allocate a total of just under $10.2 million in Barnes Fund money, along with in some cases surplus metro property to 11 nonprofit groups for constructing affordable or available or workforce, affordable or workforce housing, in some case, in one case, just for older adults. Our resolution, RS 2023-2265, accepts an in-kind grant from Greenways of Nashville Organization valued at about $270,000. $270, Work will go to provide improvements to 30 different Greenway trailheads and signage sites in the, at the Cumberland River, Mill Creek, Richland Creek, and Seven Mile Greenways. Two resolutions, uh, 22, 20, 20, RS 2023-2265 and 2266, accept grants of over $450,000 from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency through the Metro Office of Emergency Management. One of $98,000 is to provide resources for hazardous material hazmat preparation. It also includes a match from Metro of about $25,000. Then the grant of just over $350,000, which does not require a local grant, will help implement state homeland security strategies by, identi by identifying the identified planning, equipment, training, and exercise needs required to prevent, respond to, and recover from an act of terrorism. In the area of transportation and infrastructure, RS 2023-2270 would approve Metro applying for a $4 million grant from the state. If approved, the grant would be used to develop and coordinate projects uh, for staging and financing for a multitude of transportation-related infrastructure projects in development that would impact not just Nashville, but all the entire Middle Tennessee region. Under memorializing resolutions, the council will commemorate the 50th anniversary of the first full meeting of the Metropolitan Council to be aired on live television. That occurred on July 3rd, 1973. Council also will declare June 2023 as Alzheimer and Brain Awareness Month in Nashville and Davidson County. There's also a late resolution night honoring the 15th anniversary of the Southern Word publication and another late resolution allocating almost $3 million for Metro libraries to work with 19 different local nonprofit groups to operate summer and after school reading programs beginning next month. On first reading, the council will consider a bill to reconstruct the city's voter approved community oversight board after a new state law effectively stripped the current board of its investigative powers. The controversial renovation of the Nashville Speedway on the state fair of the state fairgrounds is also up for a first reading consideration again tonight. On second reading, BL 2023-1740 that would change the regulations surrounding the discharge of a gun in the General, Service, General Services District is before the council again. It's been twice deferred. An ordinance of 20, uh, an ordinance at BL 2023-1882 would establish a bike and pedestrian safety advisory commission is also back on the agenda. Finally, two other second reading, second reading bills of note. BL 2023-1886 would require landlords to provide persons 55 years or older a 60-day notice of termination of tenancy for the purposes of eviction to make way for new property developments. In the area of slowing down, in the area of slowing down traffic in residential areas in Nashville, BR 2023-1887 would extend the 25 mile per hour speed limit on local roads beyond those designated in the major and collector street plan within the urban services district. The ordinance now would lower that speed limit from 30 to 25 miles per hour on local streets throughout the general services district. It's estimated the cost for Metro for new street signage will cost will be about $60,000. If you want to follow tonight's council meeting as it progresses, you can find the agenda and the staff analysis online. Just go to the Metro Council portion of the Nashville.gov website and then on the Legislative Information Center. We'll also be placing the bill numbers up on the screen when they come up for consideration so we can follow, so you can follow along and keep up with what's going on during the meeting agenda. Let's go now to Vice Mayor Jim Schobel. He'll be gaveling tonight's council meeting order shortly. You go first, twice, and then you grab it. Yeah, go ahead. Now, good job. Stay right there. Will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, June 20th, 2023. Will all members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Invocation tonight is brought to us by Reverend Adrian White. They are the pastor at Woodland Presbyterian Church in District 6, guest of council member Brett Withers. Good evening and thank you. As this evening of collaboration and decision-making begins, may we turn our attention to the source of love, 
the holy of many names, or the spark of hope that lives deep in our guts, which jolts us from complacency. In the Jewish and Christian scriptures, Genesis 1 teaches us that God made humankind in God's own image and made us for flourishing. Yet we see all around us that such flourishing has not yet come to pass in attacks on gender-affirming health care, in the silencing of history, in the relentless exploitation of poor and incarcerated people. We gather tonight in between Juneteenth and Nashville Pride. We celebrate the black and LGBTQIA plus ancestors who tore themselves from the vice-like grip of state violence, ideological repression and dehumanization for the sake of liberation and love. This week and always, let us honor their stories and humbly continue their work. And we have the opportunity to choose between more liberation or more punishment. Let freedom ring. When we have the chance to create possibilities for thriving and connection where there has only been desolation, let us leap into action. And when we encounter the image of the sacred in an unexpected face, let our hearts be overwhelmed, not with fear, but with joy. May it be so. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Y'all may be seated. Um, we had two people bang in our meeting tonight. The first is Amara, a nine-year-old from Harpeth Valley Elementary who wrote a remarkable letter to the Tennessean entitled A Kid's Eye View, Scared in School. Uh, when you have a minute, you should take a look at it. Very, very impressive. And our other student tonight is Brendan, a rising junior at University School of Nashville. Uh, he is the founder of a group called Students for Education, which is an advocacy group that uh, goes up like on Capitol Hill and advocates for students from all over the state. So please join me in thanking them for being here tonight. We're starting on time. All right. Um, we're just going to go to the end of the calendar and just call it a day. Um, without objection, we will suspend the calling the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting from June 13th, 2023? I got a motion properly second. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Mr. Clerk, any messages from the mayor? There are no messages from the mayor. All right. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Hurt, I'm recognizing you. You're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to let the council know that I spoke with our former council member, Edith Taylor Langster, and she's in Creekside Rehabilitation Center. This is the first time in eight years that she will not be able to watch the council meeting. You know, she was a former council member up to 2015, and because they don't have Channel 3 at this rehabilitation center, she's not going to be able to watch. And I just wanted to make it a part of the record for her to know that we did recognize her. We wish her a speedy recovery and hope that all continues very well for her. Thank you, Council Member Hurt. Um, what we will do is we will get a recording of this so that she can watch it on a, as many times as she wants, all right? It will probably improve her rehab, I think, all right? Um, all right, um, so um, as I usually say, please remember the people in the world. Oh, Council Member Porterfield, for what reason? Thank you, Vice Mayor. I also just want to uh, stand there very quickly, congratulate our colleague, Councilwoman Sharon Hurt, who was um, honored this weekend with, a doctor with an honorary doctoral degree. So I wanted to just congratulate Dr. Hurt.
<clears throat> All right, Dr. Hart. <laughs> All right. Um, please remember the people in the, in the world in your thoughts and prayers. I usually say that, uh, including the people of Ukraine. Lots of problems in lots of places. Continue to um, hope for peace. Uh, and before we head into our long agenda for the night, um, we had been working with uh, the Metro Arts Commission, um, and um, they have arranged a performance a performance for us, um, and uh, it is connected with celebrating Pride Month. Um, so um, our guest tonight uh, was born in Ohio. It's made East Nashville home for nearly a decade. Uh, started playing guitar in his first band at age 11. Uh, went on to receive a jazz guitar scholarship to Boston's Berkeley College of Music. Not that Berkeley, but Berkeley. Uh, in 2014, he released his first solo, uh, Crooked River Burning, that reached number one on the iTunes singer-songwriter chart. And he hasn't stopped since. Uh, Sir Elton John ranked um, his uh, Taz John, Taz John, Taz John, I hope I said that right, amongst his favorite albums of the year. Please join me in welcoming Aaron Lee Taz John. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Um, I want to sing a song for you guys that I wrote called I Love America Better Than You. I hope you like it. I hope it makes you think. <laughs> I love America better than you. Her dirty water and her hot dogs too. Purple mountaintops, jazz and soda pop. I love America better than you. Depending on we're all created equal to go live some kind of dream. And I'm not sure that sparklers or $20 parking is going to get me free enough to hear the eagles scream. I love America better than you, her dirty money and her hot dogs too. Rich celebrities, wealth disparities, I love America better than you. Hey, Uncle Sam, I was raised a man by a daddy who went to Vietnam. I guess he's doing better than his buddies on the wall. But old trigger finger strikes again when it pulls on things he don't intend. Meanwhile, his mind has wandered off somewhere down the hall. I love America better than you. Her dirty laundry and her hot dogs, too. Guns and culture shock, fast food restaurants. I love America better than you. Well, they say our founding fathers built a Christian nation, but nowhere in the Bible does God bless the USA. But at least he gave us Walmart and the people that we called the Indians who showed us how to smoke tobacco. Now that's a good revenge. I love America better than you. Her founding mothers and her hot dogs too. First black president, insurrectionist. I love America better than you. I love America better than you. Her crowded cities and her hot dogs too. Land of immigrants, queer trans feminists. I love America better than you. I love America better than you. I love America better than you. Thank you for your time. Stay until the end of the meeting if you'd like. All right. 
All right, I believe we are now ready for um, elections and confirmations. Council Member Murphy, report from the committee, please. Thank you. I'm gonna start with Thursday's report. So we've got stormwater management committee appointment of Ms. Brittany Simpson. Uh, that was approved five in favor, zero against. Uh, NECAT appointment of Mr. Jeremy Mercer was deferred until July 6th, five in favor, zero against. Parks and Rec reappointment of Ms. Susanna Scott Barnes for a term uh, expiring April 30th, 2028, approved five in favor, zero against. Planning Commission appointments, both of these are expiring on March 31st, 2027, and that would be Mr. Matthew Smith and Mr. Denny Marshall. And then also the library board reappointment of Mr. Robert Orman for term expiring April 6, 2030, approved five in favor, zero against. And then today we have the pleasure of adding to this list the uh, electric power board reappointment of Mr. Rob McCabe for a term expiring July 1, 2028, four in favor, zero against. NECAT appointment of Jerome Moore uh, till May 5th, 2028, four in favor, zero against. And that is all we have on, oh wait. Did you have some film and entertainment? Let me folks. get to the mayoral, yep. the, the mayoral appointments for film and entertainment. Mr. Ken uh, Levitin expires on June 20th, 2025, five in favor, zero against. Mr. Willie Sims expiring on June 20th, 2025, that was five in favor, zero against. Um, we had Ms. Hazel Smith, she's deferred to July, five in favor, zero against. Uh, Ms. Sarah Trahern, uh, five in favor, zero against until June 20th, 2025. Um, and then also we have the, the union uh, appointees of Dave Pomeroy, also expiring June 20th, 2026, five in favor, zero against. Uh, Mr. Peter Curlin for a term expiring June 20th, 2026, four in favor, zero against. And appointment of Mr. Michael Montgomery for a term expiring on June 20th, 2026, five in favor, zero against. And with that, I'd like to move approval. All right, so let me make sure we've got all this right. Uh, um, Councilman Murphy, let me just go through the list. Uh, starting with E1, a reappointment of Mr. Rob McKay for the Electric Power Board. Uh, that's ready to go tonight. Um, E5, uh, the appointment of Mr. Jerome Moore for NECAT, that's ready to go tonight. Uh, so is the reappointment of Ms. Susanna Scott Barnes for uh, the Parks and Rec Board. Uh, Mr. Matthew Smith and Ms. Jenny Marshall for the Planning Commission, both those were approved. Uh, Mr. Robert Orman for the Public Library Board, uh, that was approved. Appointment of Ms. Brittany Simpson, uh, Stormwater Management Committee. Uh, Mr. Ken Leviton uh, for the uh, National Music Film and Entertainment Commission. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Willie Sims, uh, also for the National Music Film and Entertainment Commission. Uh, Mr. Dave Pomeroy, also for the same commission. Uh, Peter Curlin, also for the same commission. Mr. Michael Montgomery, also for the same commission. Do I have that right? Sure do. Uh, so, nope. so E14, Ms. Ms. Sarah Trahorn, I had that one uh, moved to July. Okay, but let me make sure I've got that one. So I had Hazel Smith. What about Miss Sarah Trahern? She's here. Miss Sarah Trahern is here. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, she was approved on the 15th. Okay. Okay, so she is approved as well. So Miss Sarah Trahern also for the National Music Film and Entertainment Commission. Uh, Council Member Lee, were you just checking on that? I was just letting her know that you didn't hear her. Okay. Traffic control. Okay, got it. All right, so I think I've got um, all those correct. Need a motion, um, Chairman Murphy, uh, to approve. Renew my motion for approval. Got a motion properly second. Seconded any discussion on the nominations or reappointments. Uh, Council Member Hart. Yes, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, as chair of Metro Public Facilities, Art and Culture and Parks, 
I would like to state that Parks did recruit an outstanding candidate in Mr. Denny Marshall, and he is so good that he was able to actually serve in more than one capacity. And because we had someone on the Parks Board who was interested in reaffirming her appointment, he was selected by the mayor's office to be one of our planning commissioners. And I am so grateful that he's such an outstanding candidate. And I know that he was interested in serving in parks, but he also says that he was happy to serve as planning. So I just wanted to stand and recognize um, the outstanding uh, commitment from him and his willingness to serve the city of Nashville and Davidson County. Thank Renew you, my motion. All right, so uh, Councilmember Murphy has re uh, renewed her motion. Again, it was properly seconded. Any other discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt, so um, when I call your name, if you would stand up, if you're still here, and remain standing so we can recognize everyone. Uh, Mr. Rob McCabe. There he is. Um, I've got Mr. Jerome Moore. Uh, Ms. Susanna Scott Barnes. Uh, Mr. Matthew Smith, Mr. Denny Marshall, Mr. Robert Orman, Ms. Brittany Simpson, uh, Mr. Ken Leviton, there he is, uh, Willie Sims, uh, Ms. Um, Sarah Trahern, she is, uh, Mr. Dave Pomeroy, Peter Curlin and Michael Montgomery. All right, I think I got everybody. Would you all please join me in thanking them for their service to Nashville? So uh, you all can stay if you want, or you can leave immediately. All right. Okay, um, Chairman Murphy, um, back to you. So um, let me make sure I've got this. Uh, Mr. Jeremy Mercer um, was uh, is deferred one meeting, as is the appointment of Ms. Hazel Smith for the Music, Film, and Entertainment Commission. Correct. Correct. Okay. Now. We're on items E2 and E3, uh, that is the Cheatham County Rail Authority and the Nashville and Eastern Rail Authority. Uh, did those members come before you? I'm not really sure if they had to. No. Okay. Well, um, so we had one nomination for each of those. Uh, the nomination of Council Member uh, Joy Stiles for the Cheatham County Rail Authority and Council Member Aaron Evans for the Nashville and Eastern Rail Authority. I think I just need a motion to approve those. Uh, Move to approve. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of those two nominations, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, nominations are both confirmed. Congratulations to Council Member Stiles and Council Member Evans. All right, we are now, um, we're now at E18 and E19, but I believe that we would like to, if it's okay, take E20 before those two, uh, because um, uh, those two may take a little while. Any objections to that? Without objection, uh, we will take, um, E20 out of order, it's House District 51 vacancy. So uh, the explanation is obviously um, the seat is now vacated by the passing of Representative Bill Beck on June 4th, 2023. Uh, pursuant to section 3.04 of the charter and rule 49 of our rules, uh, nominations are to be taken tonight uh, to elect an interim successor. And what I wanna do is, um, we, again, we will be using the new Rule 49, which was passed by uh, this body uh, not very long ago. Um, let me read a little bit of portion of it. At the meeting when the uh, selection is to be conducted, uh, the council member or other person having nominated a can candidate may speak for no more than five minutes and may yield the floor to the candidate or other persons who wish to speak in support of the nomination. No more than five minutes total shall be given to any one candidate for the presentation and the person speaking in support of the candidate, the election to fill the vacancy shall be conducted in the same manner as provided in Rule 48, two, sections two and three. Uh, and those 
sections indicate that we would take a machine vote or by open ballot. But we are taking nominations tonight to fill the vacant seat of, of House District uh, House District 51. So um, um, I will now take uh, nominations. Councilmember Benedict, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to nominate Anthony Davis. All right. So Councilmember Benedict nominates uh, Anthony Davis. Uh, other nominations? Seeing none, except a, a motion to close nominations. Got a motion to close nominations. That's seconded. All in favor of the motion to close nominations say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Councilmember Benedict, if you would like to be recognized, you're up first, and then I'll recognize Councilmember Swope. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, Anthony Davis is a former council member who actually sat in the very chair that I'm sitting in, sat at this desk, and I have a note from him in this desk because he's a gracious man who was very supportive of me and I'm very supportive of him. As I'm out talking with voters right now and as I have spoken with my constituents over the past few years, he is still wildly popular in the district. Um, as you know, we all represent in their districts 20,000 people, and currently the District 51 seat is open. My 20,000 constituents don't currently have a state representative representing them. They don't have someone who I can send to for constituent services, and there's another 50,000 people in District 51 who are in the same situation. Um, Anthony is a family man. He grew up in Nashville. He went to MLK. He got, his kids go to public school. Um, he, so I, I've got a list here of some of his accomplishments. I wanna make sure I list some of them for you. I think many of you are familiar with him. He served from 2011 to 2019, as I said here on this body. <clears throat> he was the lead sponsor of the Do Better Bill, the One Touch Make Ready, and the Better Procurement Ordinance. He helped sponsor domestic partner benefits and um, creating contextual overlays and many more things throughout the district. Um, including the playground at Cornelia Fort. So if you're familiar with Shelby Park, that is a wildly popular um, feature at the park. He was nominated by the Nashville scene five different times between 2013 and 2018 as the best council member. And um, in 2018, he was nominated, or he was the, he was actually won the East Nashvilleian of the year. I couldn't be more proud to represent a local businessman, a local advocate for voters, for people, and I think that he will serve us very well. And so with that, um, Vice Mayor, I have uh, nothing else to share, and I don't know if I need to yield the floor to anyone, but I would appreciate everyone's support. I would love to see, I think, um, well, I should also add, uh, the family of Representative Beck um, also is, is, is are supportive of him, and so I hope that this body will support putting Anthony in that seat so that we can go forward in the next few weeks to make sure that um, he is there and that my constituents, again, have a representative at the state. Thank right. you. Thank you, Councilor Benedict. Um, so again, this is, uh, there's five minutes, and it's uh, anybody wishing to speak in support of the nomination. Council Member Swope? Previous question. Oh, okay. Uh, well, um, that's not really allowed because uh, I still have to open it up for five minutes, but we're pretty close. Anybody else wishing to speak? Again, um, you're allowed five minutes. If anybody else has any comments in support of the nomination. All right, we're gonna vote. All right, so um, because of the requirement under Rule 48, we are on the board, uh, Mr. Clerk, and what we'll be doing is voting uh, in support of the nomination of Anthony Davis to fill the vacant seat for House District 51. Council Member Lee, did you want to speak? I was going to in support, but since you are moving on and folks will be looking at me like, why are you holding up the, <laughs> but I will just say he would be good for education on the state level and that's what I work with um, legislators up there. So I was just speaking in support. Thank you, sir. Yeah, remember that for when we get on the budget, all right? <laughs> Thank you, Council Member Lee. All right, anybody else? Uh, we are ready, almost ready to vote. It's a motion to approve the election of Anthony Davis for the House District 51 seat vacancy. Ready? Mr. Clark, if you would, open up the machines. Obviously, if you're in favor, you'd vote aye. If you're not in favor, you'd vote no.
Councilmember Cash, Councilmember Vircher. Everybody in? Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. Ayes 36, uh, no zero, one abstention. Um, the, uh, the motion is adopted. We are hereby appointing or electing Anthony Davis to fill as the interim successor to House District 51. And I believe I see him in the back. Um, Mr. Uh, Davis or uh, newly elected um, free state representative, would you like to say something? He hasn't been sworn in yet and we haven't certified the papers yet. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I'll be brief. I know you guys have a really full agenda and I remember the uh, the uh, long budget meetings all too well. Um, just real, real quick, I, I did wanna say, um, you know, none of us wanted to be here um, and really I just miss my friend. Um, Bill Beck was just an amazing man, magnanimous, transparent, one of the kindest, jealous people you'd ever meet. Um, I know that's all been said before, but we can't forget him. Um, thank you so much for this. You know, ultimately the voters are gonna decide, um, but I think, you know, you did the right thing here. This is very important that we have our seat filled, um, as, as my colleague, Council Member Benedict said. Um, and uh, it's just a great honor. It's a great honor to serve the city and the state. Uh, I'll work hard. Um, even if it's just for a short time, but <laughs> hopefully I'll get to work for you. And um, this is very special and this is for Bill. So thank you. All right, thank you. All right, uh, Council Member Murphy, I need you back in your uh, uh, your chair. <laughs> All right, so Council Member Murphy, you recognize we are now on E18. Um, uh, that is to elect four vacancies from nominations submitted by the entertainment industry at large for terms expiring. June 20th, 2027, for the Nashville Music, Film, and Entertainment Commission. We're on E18. Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized. I'm gonna start with Thursday's report, and then we're gonna move to today's report. Okay. So, starting with the entertainment industry at large positions that expire on June 20th, 2027, um, we have Annie Aquinto. I told her I would mess that up, I'm sorry. Five in favor, zero against. We had Jeff Gordon, who confirmed he is not a NASCAR driver. Five in favor, zero against. Trey McLaurin, five in favor, zero against. Camera Trexler, five in favor, zero against. Now, keep in mind, we're coming back to a few more of those. So, these are the nominees submitted by council members for a term expiring on June 20th, 2024. We had Brian Sexton, four in favor, zero against. Chris Cobb, four in favor. Hey, hey, council member, I think we're gonna keep the election separate. Okay, I think that's okay. probably easier. Then let me so, go back to the yeah, other. Go back to the other one. So we're just on E18. Okay. So the other at larges. The other at larges were Kristen Baker, and we had five in favor, zero against. Max Butler, five in favor, zero against. Malisha Edwards, five in favor, zero against. And Gina Miller, five in favor, zero against. Yeah, 
uh, Christopher Capazzoli and Will Lowry. Do we have a report on those two? They were on the next, uh, they, they got double, nomina double nominations. So are we considering them for both? Okay, so William Lowry was five in favor, zero against, and Christopher Capazzoli was five in favor, zero against. Okay, so on under E18, uh, which is listed on your agenda at 23-347, every nominee that's on the agenda uh, was approved by the Rules Committee. They were they were screened and they're so they're um, they have qualified to be uh, selected for this position. All right. So um, what we've got is um, we're going to be following Rule 50 uh, for the election, uh, and here's what that rule states in part: uh, the election for all seats on a board shall be held concurrently with each council member allowed to vote for a number of nominees equal to that total number of vacancies. So we've got four vacancies. Each vacancy will be filled by A, the top recipient of votes, and or B, any other nominee receiving 21 or more votes in order of total vote count until all vacancies are filled. In the event of multiple vacancies, each person nominated and not elected on the election for the first vacant position shall be deemed nominated for such succeeding election for a vacant position being voted upon at such meeting. Uh, we will utilize written ballots. Uh, Ms. Uh, Godin is passing those out right now. Uh, the ballots shall be distributed to each council member who shall write or print their name and either their district number or at large notation and shall vote for the nominees of their choice. Remember, you can vote for up to four. Ballots will then be collected. The clerk will then read the council member's name and the candidates for which the member of the council voted. So we make sure we got that right. And then if you would, uh, after the, the clerk reads your name and uh, the nominee if you would just confirm that that is correct, and then we will tabulate the vote and make the announcement. Any questions regarding that? Okay, can you can vote for up to four? <laughs> Councilmember Roberts, you can vote for up to four. Can't vote for any more than that, but up to four. Uh, no, you can, if you vote once, that's called single shotting. Um, you can do it, but it doesn't count four times. So Ms. Godin has told me that there should be a sheet on your desk of everybody um, who is eligible, but if you also look on the board, it's, up, it's also up there, okay? So again, you can vote for up to four. <laughs>
Final reading. All votes in? Aye. Aye. Anybody still have their vote? Ready? All right. Um, the clerk is going to read your um, your name and then the uh, nominations that you placed on the ballot. Make sure that you confirm that that is correct. Mr. Clark. Councilmember Hertz selected Malisha Edwards, Trey McLarnon, Gina Miller, and Jeff Gordon. Councilmember Allen selected Max Butler, Chris Capazzoli, Will Lowry, and Malisha Edwards. Councilmember Suara selected Malisha Edwards, Max Butler, Jeff Gordon, and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Hall selected Max Butler and Malisha Edwards. Councilmember Toombs selected Malisha Edwards, Max Butler, Jeff Gordon, and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Gamble selected Malisha Edwards, Jeff Gordon, Max Butler, and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Swope selected Jeff Gordon, Tamara Trexler, William Lowry, and Malisha Edwards. Councilmember Parker selected Max Butler and Malisha Edwards. Councilmember Withers selected Max Butler, Malisha Edwards, Jeff Gordon, and Gina Miller. Councilmember Benedict selected Malisha Edwards, Tamara Trexler, Max Butler, and Jeff Gordon. Councilmember Van Rees selected Kristen Baker, Trey McLarnon, Malisha Edwards, and Tamara Trexler. Councilmember Hancock selected Malisha Edwards, Trey McLarnon, Kristen Baker, and Gina Miller. Councilmember Young selected Kristen Baker and Malisha Edwards. Edwards. McLarnon. Baker and Edwards. <laughs> Councilman Hager selected Kristen Baker and Malisha Edwards. Councilmember Evans selected Malisha Edwards, Max Butler, Will Lowry, and Annie Aquino. Councilmember Bradford selected Annie Aquino, Malisha Edwards, Will Lowry, and Chris Capazzoli. Councilmember Roten selected Chris Capazzoli, Malisha Edwards, Gina Miller, and Kristen Baker. Councilmember Syracuse selected Chris Capazzoli, Malisha Edwards, 
Gina Miller and Tamara Trexler. Councilmember Welsh selected Tamara Trexler, Max Butler, Malisha Edwards, and Jeff Gordon. Councilmember Sledge selected Max Butler, Malisha Edwards, Jeff Gordon, and Tamara Trexler. Councilmember Cash selected Max Butler, Malisha Edwards, Tamara Trexler, and Gina Miller. Councilmember O'Connell selected Max Butler, Malisha Edwards, Jeff Gordon, and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Roberts selected Max Butler, Malisha Edwards, Jeff Gordon, and Tamara Trexler. Councilmember Taylor selected Malisha Edwards, Max Butler, Trey McLarnon, and Gina Miller. Councilmember Hauser selected Max Butler, Malisha Edwards, Jeff Gordon, and Tamara Trexler. Councilmember Druffel selected Max Butler, Jeff Gordon, Malisha Edwards, and Will Lowry. Councilmember Murphy selected Max Butler, Malisha Edwards, Tamara Trexler, and Jeff Gordon. Councilmember Pooley selected Will Lowry, Max Butler, Chris Capazzoli, and Malisha Edwards. Councilmember Johnston selected Max Butler, Malisha Edwards, Jeff Gordon, and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Vercher selected Malisha Edwards, Saletta Holloway, and Brian Sexton. Okay, hold on. Uh, so, um, Ms. Holloway is not on this list. Neither is Sexton. At least and, and Sexton was the third, okay. Okay, the first one was does count, and that is... Um, Malisha Edwards. Malisha Edwards, okay. Councilmember Porterfield selected Malisha Edwards, Max Butler, Gina Miller, and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Sepulveda selected Malisha Edwards, Max Butler, Jeff Gordon, and Gina Miller. Councilmember Rutherford selected Max Butler, Malisha Edwards, Jeff Gordon, and Gina Miller. Councilmember Stiles selected Max Butler, Malisha Edwards, Jeff Gordon, and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Lee selected Malisha Edwards and Max Butler. Councilmember Henderson selected Malisha Edwards, Max Butler, Trey McLarnon, and Jeff Gordon. Councilmember Rosenberg selected Kristen Baker, Max Butler, Malisha Edwards, and Trey McLarnon. Any, uh, any changes on any of those? that we made a mistake on. Okay.
Um, so uh, the totals were uh, in the first round of voting. Uh, Aquino got two, Baker got six, Butler got 27, uh, Capazzoli got five, Edwards got 37, Gordon got 19, Lowry got six, uh, McLarnon got 13, Miller got 10, and Trexler got 10. So based upon our voting, uh, Edwards uh, and Butler were elected on the first round. Congratulations. Okay. So now, um, now we vote again. <clears throat> so we're still trying to fill uh, the last two spots. Um, so um, do not vote for Edwards or Butler this time, okay? We have um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight uh, nominees still in play. Uh, Aquino, Baker, Capazzoli, uh, Gordon, Lowry, McLarnon, Miller, and Trexler. So this time you're only voting for two. Okay. Councilman Roberts, you good with that? Okay. Councilman Bircher, you good with all that? Member Salas, you have a question? Uh, no, I wanted to uh, do a clarification because I had sent in the the handout beforehand, but Kristen is LGBTQ, well, so, so, you, should... so you can't you can't talk Can about I? not while okay. we're voting. Okay. All ballots in. Councilman Rosenberg has a ballot. Okay. 
Okay, um, the clerk, I think we've got all the ballots in. Uh, Mr. Clerk, um, proceed to call the roll and check the nominations. Right. Councilmember Hurt selected Gina Miller and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Allen selected Chris Capazzoli and Will Lowry. Councilmember Suara selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Hall selected Jeff Gordon and Gina Miller. Councilmember Toombs selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Gamble selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Swope selected Jeff Gordon and Tamara Trexler. Councilmember Parker selected Gina Miller and Chris Capazzoli. Councilmember Withers selected Jeff Gordon and Gina Miller. Councilmember Benedict selected Tamara Trexler and Kristen Baker. Councilmember Van Reese selected Trey McLarnon and Kristen Baker. Councilmember Hancock selected Kristen Baker and Gina Miller. Councilmember Young selected Kristen Baker and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Hager selected Kristen Baker and Gina Miller. Councilmember Evans selected Will Lowry and Annie Aquino. Councilmember Bradford selected Annie Aquino and Will Lowry. Councilmember Roten selected Gina Miller and Chris Capazzoli. Councilmember Syracuse selected Gina Miller and Chris Capazzoli. Councilmember Welsh selected Kristen Baker and Jeff Gordon. Councilmember Sledge selected Jeff Gordon and Tamara Trexler. Councilmember Cash selected Jeff Gordon and Tamara Trexler. Councilmember O'Connell selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Okay. Councilmember Roberts selected Kristen Baker and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Taylor selected Gina Miller and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Hauser selected Jeff Gordon and Tamara Trexler. Councilmember Druffle selected Jeff Gordon and Will Lowry. Councilmember Murphy selected Tamara Trexler and Jeff Gordon. Councilmember Pooley selected Will Lowry and Chris Capazzoli. Councilmember Johnston selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Porterfield selected Gina Miller and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Sepulveda selected Jeff Gordon and Gina Miller. Councilmember Rutherford selected Jeff Gordon and Gina Miller. Councilmember Stiles selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Lee selected Kristen Baker. Councilmember Henderson selected Trey McLarnon and Jeff Gordon. And Councilmember Rosenberg selected Kristen Baker and Trey McLarnon.
Okay, so I'm gonna announce the vote totals. Um, Aquino got uh, two, uh, Baker got nine, Capazzoli got five, Gordon got 18, Lowry got five, McLaren got 14, Miller got 12, and Trexler got six. So um, what we've done in the past when we get to this point, um, because we could continue voting, but we, we might get the same vote totals, is that at some point we um, uh, figure out how many vacancies we've got and go to four and then, and then vote and take the top two. Council Member Allen, you recognize. I have just a question on, on the rule. It says whoever gets the most votes and or 21 votes, so do you have to get 21 votes or if you get the most votes in that round, does that Let's just, put you over. Each vacancy will be filled by A, the top recipient of votes and or any other nominee receiving 21 or more votes in order of total vote count. So we're looking at 21. Okay. Okay. So again, um, we do this without objection. We would take the top four vote getters and then, uh, and then have the election based upon that. Okay. Any objections to that? Any objections? Then we'll do it without objection. Okay, so we, what we do is we then go to uh, four, uh, which is um, uh, Baker, uh, Gordon, McLarnon, and Miller. Those would be the four that you would be voting for, and you can vote for two. Baker, Gordon, McLarnon, Miller. Again, you're only voting for two. Councilmember Roberts, you're only voting for two. <laughs> Councilmember Roberts, you can vote for only two, only two names on your ballot. Councilmember Hancock is not going to be allowed three. She can vote for two.
All ballots in. All ballots in. Okay, Mr. Clark, call out the names and the nominations. Councilmember Hurt selected Gina Miller and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Allen selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Suara selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Hall selected Jeff Gordon and Gina Miller. Councilmember Toombs selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Gamble selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Swope selected Jeff Gordon and Gina Miller. Councilmember Parker selected Kristen Baker and Gina Miller. Councilmember Withers selected Jeff Gordon and Kristen Baker. Councilmember Benedict selected Kristen Baker and Jeff Gordon. Councilmember Van Reese selected Kristen Baker and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Hancock selected Kristen Baker and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Young selected Kristen Baker and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Hager selected Gina Miller and Jeff Gordon. Councilmember Evans selected Trey McLarnon and Kristen Baker. Councilmember Bradford selected Kristen Baker and Jeff Gordon. Councilmember Roten selected Kristen Baker and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Syracuse selected Gina Miller and Jeff Gordon. Councilmember Welsh selected Kristen Baker and Jeff Gordon. Councilmember Sledge selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Cash selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember O'Connell selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Roberts selected Gina Miller and Kristen Baker. Councilmember Taylor selected Gina Miller and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Hauser selected Jeff Gordon and Gina Miller. Councilmember Druffle selected Jeff Gordon and Gina Miller. Councilmember Murphy selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Pulley selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Johnston selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Verger selected Gina Miller. Councilmember Porterfield selected Gina Miller and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Sepulveda selected Jeff Gordon and Gina Miller. Councilmember Rutherford selected Jeff Gordon and Gina Miller. Councilmember Stiles selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. Councilmember Lee selected Gina Miller. Councilmember Henderson selected Jeff Gordon and Trey McLarnon. And Councilmember Rosenberg selected Kristen Baker and Trey McLarnon.
Okay, the vote totals are um, uh, Miller with 15, Baker with 12, Gordon with 24, and McLarnon with 21. So um, Gordon and McLarnon are elected to the, um, to the board, or to the commission. Congratulations, it was a fierce battle. Uh, I'm exhausted, time to go home. And now we get to do it all over again. Okay. All right, uh, Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Congratulations to those four. We are now on um, E19, it's 23-348 on the agenda. Uh, this is the election to fill three vacancies from council member nominations for terms expiring June 20th, 2024. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you, we've got Brian Sexton, four in favor, zero against. Chris Cobb, four in favor, zero against. Shannon Sanders, four in favor, zero against. Sally Williams, four in favor, zero against. Stephanie Silverman, four in favor, zero against. Salita Holloway, five in favor, zero against. Harry Nelson Birch, five in favor, zero against. Uh, William Lowry again, five in favor, zero against. Uh, Christopher Capazzoli again, five in favor, zero against. Uh, Thomas Ario. Olivo, Olivo, got it close maybe? I think it's Oliverio. Oliverio, uh, five in favor, zero against. And then. And we're all waiting for the last one. That's it. Mr. Garth Brooks. He withdrew. Okay, all right. He heard he had to sing with me and didn't show up. All right, Councilman O'Connell. Uh, thanks, Mr. President. I'd like to suspend the rules to get uh, Chris Gaines nominated, please. <laughs> uh, overruled. All right. <laughs> All right, so we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, Ten uh, names for uh, in nomination. Uh, we have an election to fill three vacancies. Uh, all those, all the names that were um, uh, on the board have been confirmed by the rules committee. So um, again, we are going to be voting in the exact same way. Uh, this time again, we start uh, fresh. Uh, you will be able to vote for up to three. All right. Already passed out the ballots. Oh, okay. You're quick. Wait.
All ballots in. All right, uh, Mr. Clark, uh, proceed with the uh, calling of the roll. Councilmember Hurt selected Saletta Holloway, Brian Sexton, and Thomas Oliverio. Councilmember Allen selected Stephanie Silverman, Chris Capazzoli, and Will Lowry. Councilmember Suara selected Saletta Holloway, Brian Sexton, and Stephanie Silverman. Councilmember Hall selected Saletta Holloway and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Toombs selected Brian Sexton, Shannon Sanders, and Saletta Holloway. Councilmember Gamble selected Brian Sexton, Thomas Oliverio, and Saletta Holloway. Okay, Mr. Clark, hold on just a second. Okay. It's, yeah, it's a little hard. All right, proceed ahead. Councilmember Swope selected Carrie Nelson Birch, Salita Holloway, and Will Lowry. Councilmember Parker selected Chris Cobb, Brian Sexton, and Stephanie Silverman. Councilmember Withers selected Brian Sexton, Chris Cobb, and Thomas Oliverio. Councilmember Benedict selected Stephanie Silverman, Chris Cobb, and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Van Rees selected Carrie Nelson Birch, Thomas Oliverio, and Stephanie Silverman. Councilmember Hancock selected Brian Sexton, Thomas Oliverio, and Stephanie Silverman. Councilmember Young selected Brian Sexton, Stephanie Silverman, and Thomas Oliverio. Councilmember Hager selected Shannon Sanders, Brian Sexton, and Sally Williams. Councilmember Evans selected Brian Sexton, Sally Williams, and Thomas Oliverio. Councilmember Bradford selected Nick Burren, Brian Sexton, and Will Lowry. Hold on, I go back and do that one again. Uh, Nick Burren, he was nominee, but he didn't qualify. Okay, so read that one again. So uh, we have Council one. Councilmember Bradford selected Nick Burren, Brian Sexton, and Will Lowry. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Syracuse selected Brian Sexton, Chris Cobb, and Salita Holloway. Councilmember Welsh selected Stephanie Silverman, Shannon Sanders, and Sally Williams. Councilmember Sledge selected Will Lowry, Shannon Sanders, and Stephanie Silverman. Councilmember Cash selected Stephanie Silverman, Brian Sexton, and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember O'Connell selected Shannon Sanders, Stephanie Silverman, and Brian Sexton. Councilmember Roberts selected Brian Sexton, Shannon Sanders, and Salita Holloway. Councilmember Taylor selected Brian Sexton, Salita Holloway, and Chris Cobb. Councilmember Hauser selected Salita Holloway, Shannon Sanders, and Stephanie Silverman. Councilmember Druppel selected Will Lowry, Brian Sexton, and Thomas Oliverio. Councilmember Murphy selected Stephanie Silverman, Will Lowry, and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Pooley selected Stephanie Silverman, Thomas Oliverio, and Will Lowry. Councilmember Johnston selected Chris Cobb, Shannon Sanders, and Brian Sexton. Councilmember Bercher selected Salita Holloway and Brian Sexton. Councilmember Porterfield selected Brian Sexton, Salita Holloway, and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Sepulveda selected Will Lowry, Shannon Sanders, and Stephanie Silverman. 
Councilmember Rutherford selected Salida Holloway, Thomas Oliverio, and Brian Sexton. Councilmember Stiles selected Shannon Sanders, Sally Williams, and Will Lowry. Um, that's uh, 33 is, is Lee. Councilmember Lee selected Salida Holloway. Councilmember Henderson selected Stephanie Silverman and Shannon Sanders. Councilman Rosenberg selected Will Lowry, Carrie Nelson Birch, and Stephanie Silverman. All right, uh, members of the council, uh, here are the votes. Um, uh, Birch got three, Capazzoli got one, uh, Cobb got six, Holloway got 14, Lowry got 10, Oliverio got 10, Sanders got 16, Sexton got 21, Silverman got 17, and Williams got four. Based upon our rules, uh, Sexton um, won one of the seats. Congratulations, Brian Sexton. All right, uh, so what we do now is we, um, uh, please don't vote for Mr. Sexton again. He is now one, so don't vote for him. The other, uh, we have nine other names. Uh, and so you will now be voting for two uh, out of the remaining nine names. Ken, don't vote for three, you're voting for two. And someone needs to go tell Councilmember Roberts that. Again, um, uh, Brian Sexton was confirmed on that vote. Uh, so we are now, we have nine nominees still um, um, in the running and you will be voting for two.
Councilmember Roberts, uh, you will be voting for two this time. All other votes in, all votes in. Are all votes in? Uh, Councilmember Murphy, I need to see you at the front, please.
Mr. Clark, if you would uh, call the roll, we're ready to go. Councilmember Hurt selected Salida Holloway and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Allen selected Stephanie Silverman and Will Lowry. Councilmember Suara selected Salida Holloway and Stephanie Silverman. Councilmember Hall selected Chris Cobb and Salida Holloway. Councilmember Toombs selected Shannon Sanders and Salida Holloway. Councilmember Gamble selected Thomas Oliverio and Salida Holloway. Councilmember Swope selected Kerry Nelson Birch and Salida Holloway. Councilmember Parker selected Chris Cobb and Stephanie Silverman. Councilmember Withers selected Chris Cobb and Thomas Oliverio. Councilmember Benedict selected Stephanie Silverman and Chris Cobb. Councilmember Van Rees selected Stephanie Silverman and Carrie Nelson Birch. Councilmember Hancock selected Thomas Oliverio and Stephanie Silverman. Councilmember Young selected Stephanie Silverman and Thomas Oliverio. Councilmember Hager selected Sally Williams and Thomas Oliverio. Councilmember Evans selected Sally Williams and Thomas Oliverio. Councilmember Bradford selected Carrie Nelson Birch and Chris Cobb. Councilmember Roten selected Thomas Oliverio and Stephanie Silverman. Councilman Syracuse selected Salida Holloway and Thomas Oliverio. Councilmember Welsh selected Stephanie Silverman and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Sledge selected Stephanie Silverman and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Cash selected Stephanie Silverman and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember O'Connell selected Stephanie Silverman and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Roberts selected Stephanie Silverman and Salida Holloway. Councilmember Taylor selected Salida Holloway and Chris Cobb. Councilmember Hauser selected Salida Holloway and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Druffel selected Shannon Sanders and Salida Holloway. Councilmember Murphy selected Shannon Sanders and Stephanie Silverman. Councilmember Pooley selected Stephanie Silverman and Thomas Oliverio. Councilmember Vercher selected Salida Holloway. Councilmember Porterfield selected Shannon Sanders and Salida Holloway. Councilmember Sepulveda selected Will Lowry and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Rutherford selected Salida Holloway and Thomas Oliverio. Councilmember Stiles selected Shannon Sanders and Sally Williams. Councilmember Lee selected Salida Holloway. Councilmember Henderson selected Stephanie Silverman and Shannon Sanders. Councilman Rosenberg selected Will Lowry and Stephanie Silverman.
Okay, uh, these are the vote totals. Um, Birch with three, Capazzoli with zero, Cobb with six, Holloway with 15, Lowry with three, Oliveria with 10, Sanders with 13, Silverman with 17, and Williams with three. So uh, just the way we did um, with the last um, uh, votes on um, item number E18, what we would do uh, without objection is take the top four vote getters and then have you vote for two. Okay, any objection to that? So, so you want to give me the tally again? Uh, Birch with three, Capazzoli with zero, Cobb with six, Holloway with 15, Lowry with three, Oliverio with 10, Sanders with 13, Silverman with 17, Williams with three. So the top four vote getters would be Holloway, Oliverio, Sanders, Silverman. So you would vote for two of those. Again, the four that we would have on here is Holloway, Oliverio, Sanders, Silverman, okay? Again, you're voting for two. All votes are in. Mr. Mr. O'Connell. Mr. Clark, um, read the names. Councilmember Hurt selected Salita Holloway and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Allen selected Stephanie Silverman and Salita Holloway. Councilmember Suara selected Salita Holloway and Stephanie Silverman. Councilmember Hall selected Salita Holloway and Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Toombs selected Shannon Sanders and Salita Holloway. Councilmember Gamble selected Thomas Oliverio and Salita Holloway.
Council Member Swope selected Salida Holloway and Shannon Sanders. Council Member Parker selected Stephanie Silverman and Salida Holloway. Council Member Withers selected Salida Holloway and Thomas Oliverio. Council Member Benedict selected Stephanie Silverman and Shannon Sanders. Council Member Van Rees selected Thomas Oliverio and Stephanie Silverman. Council Member Hancock selected Thomas Oliverio and Stephanie Silverman. Council Member Young selected Stephanie Silverman and Thomas Oliverio. Council Member Hager selected Shannon Sanders and Thomas Oliverio. Council Member Evans selected Stephanie Silverman and Thomas Oliverio. Council Member Bradford selected Thomas Oliverio and Shannon Sanders. Council Member Roten selected Thomas Oliverio and Stephanie Silverman. Council Member Syracuse selected Thomas Oliverio and Salida Holloway. Council Member Welsh selected Stephanie Silverman and Shannon Sanders. Council Member Sledge selected Stephanie Silverman and Salida Holloway. Council Member Cash selected Stephanie Silverman and Shannon Sanders. Council Member O'Connell selected Stephanie Silverman and Shannon Sanders. Council Member Roberts selected Salida Holloway and Stephanie Silverman. Council Member Taylor selected Salida Holloway and Chris Cobb. Council Member Hauser selected Salida Holloway and Stephanie Silverman. Council Member Druffle selected Shannon Sanders and Stephanie Silverman. Council Member Murphy selected Stephanie Silverman and Shannon Sanders. Council Member Pooley selected Stephanie Silverman and Thomas Oliverio. Council Member Johnston selected Shannon Sanders and Salida Holloway. Council Member Bercher selected Salida Holloway. Council Member Porterfield selected Salida Holloway and Shannon Sanders. Council Member Sepulveda selected Shannon Sanders and Stephanie Silverman. Council Member Rutherford selected Salida Holloway and Thomas Oliverio. Council Member Stiles selected Shannon Sanders and Stephanie Silverman. Council Member Lee selected Salida Holloway. Council Member Henderson selected Stephanie Silverman and Shannon Sanders. Council Member Rosenberg selected Shannon Sanders and Stephanie Silverman. Okay, um, here are the votes from that uh, round. Um, Holloway got 19 votes, Oliverio got 12, Sanders got 18, Silverman got 22. So um, uh, Stephanie Silverman um, goes on as one of the members of the M Music, Film, and Entertainment Commission. Uh, 
Stephanie, you can stand up if you want. There you go. Yeah. All right, um, and in order to end these, uh, this voting, what we would do is um, um, we would take uh, the top, the remaining top two vote getters, which are uh, Salita Holloway and uh, Ms. Sanders, um, Shannon Sanders, and we would have a basically a runoff between those two. So uh, we're passing out the ballots. Um, again, what we will do, uh, Ms. Silverman goes on as one of the members of the commission, and we will have a vote between uh, Salita Holloway and uh, Shannon Sanders for the last remaining spot on the commission, at least in terms of this, uh, picking the vacancies from the council. Okay, so um, we're passing out the ballots. Uh, you're gonna vote for one. Okay, your choices are, again, Salita Holloway or Shannon Sanders. Vote for one. So we, are, we only have one vacancy left. So Councilmember Roberts, we can only vote for one. Okay, we only have one vacancy remaining. All votes are in. Okay, uh, this is the, the final tally. Uh, Mr. Clark, read the names. Councilmember Hurt selected Salita Holloway. Councilmember Suara selected Salita Holloway. Councilmember Toombs selected Salita Holloway. Hold on uh, just a minute. Councilmember Allen, did you vote? Uh, I got it, it was just out of order. Oh, okay. Uh, Councilmember Allen selected Salita Holloway. Okay, and then Councilmember Toombs. Toombs, Councilmember Toombs voted for Salita Holloway. Okay. Councilmember Gamble selected Salita Holloway. Councilmember Swope selected Salita Holloway. Councilmember Parker selected Salita Holloway. Councilmember Withers selected Salita Holloway. Councilmember Benedict selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Van Rees selected Salita Holloway. Councilmember Young selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Hager selected Shannon Sanders. 
Councilmember Evans selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Bradford selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Roten selected Salida Holloway. Councilmember Syracuse selected Salida Holloway. Councilmember Welsh selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Sledge selected Shannon Sanders. Uh, going back to Councilmember Hancock, selected Salida Holloway. Councilmember Cash selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember O'Connell selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Roberts selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Taylor selected Salida Holloway. Councilmember Hauser selected Salida Holloway. Councilmember Druffle selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Murphy selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Pooley selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Johnston selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Vercher selected Salida Holloway. Councilmember Porterfield selected Salida Holloway. Councilmember Sepulveda selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Rutherford selected Salida Holloway. Councilmember Stiles selected Shannon Sanders. Councilmember Lee selected Salida Holloway. Councilmember Henderson selected Shannon Sanders. And Councilman Rosenberg selected Shannon Sanders. All right, so uh, we're checking, it's a tie vote. Um, it's 18 to 18, but the question is, um, I can break the tie, but we're still not at 21. So that's, we're checking that right now. Um, I think you could suspend the rules if you wanted to. Say it. <laughs> Give us just a minute um, and um, we'll check. We'll check if um, um, what happens if, if I break the tie, does that still qualify because it's, uh, it's still not at 21. Right now it's 18 to 18.
Okay. Okay, let me, uh, procedurally, this is where we are. Um, the vote for Salita Holloway was 18. The vote for Shannon Sanders was also 18. Um, we have several things going. We could either, because you need 21 votes, um, I could break the tie or we could vote again because Councilmember Hall was outside of the room. We could vote again uh, and see. Um, or do I want your vote? It, at this point, you don't have to vote because it's not gonna, it doesn't get to the 21. Uh -huh. It's a tiebreaker, but it still doesn't confirm what we need. Oh, well, I can break the tie, but it still doesn't, it still doesn't get to the 21 votes. So, um, Council Member Murphy, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to defer the final round to the next meeting where we'll vote on these last two um, uh, nominees and we will have more people here and be able to get to 21. That is keeping with the rules and the legislation more so than suspending the rules to do a different vote count. Okay, so I've got a motion to defer this vote for one meeting. It's properly seconded. Discussion on it. Councilmember Porterfield, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to lift up uh, at least two council members are going to be out for our next meeting, so I don't know that we're going to have more council members for our next meeting. We will likely have less council members. All right, anybody else want to be heard on this? Um, the choices are basically um, we can def we can defer. If you don't want to defer, then what we're going to have to do is look for a motion to suspend the rules so that um, we can then take, then we can vote again and, and that if it's a 19 to 18 vote, the winner wins, okay? We don't have to worry about 21, we go to 19. All right, but we have a motion on the floor right now, so let me get the hands up. I think Councilman Rosenberg was first and then Councilmember Allen. Councilman Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I support the deferral motion, even if we have fewer members. Uh, there, was, there were a lot of nominees to consider tonight, and I think many members didn't really have the opportunity to fully educate themselves on everybody. It's an impossible task with two people to evaluate um, two great nominees for the next meeting I think that we can all I feel like the numbers might come in differently um, and we can it would be wise to have a majority of the council behind whoever uh, ends up moving on to the commission and support deferring for that purpose thank you okay um, councilmember Allen you're recognized thank you mr. vice mayor um, I would also add to that 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 would give us the opportunity perhaps for someone our director to do a little bit of analysis on how we've hit uh, just in terms of are we representing the music and the film evenly or are we skewed and therefore that might inform um, or just in terms of demographics. So if we could perhaps get some information about how, how people fit into various categories. If we can have it analyzed with uh, the other people on the commission that were uh, nominated by the different groups for the entire 15 people, that would be helpful to me. Okay. So I would also support the deferral. Councilmember Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm, I'm also supportive of the deferral, basically for the reasons that have just been mentioned by Councilmember Allen and, and Councilmember Rosenberg. Two people is, is a lot easier to digest and, and really compare and contrast. Thank you. Um, I, uh, so one of the candidates is raising your hand, but I can't recognize you, okay? Um, <laughs> well, don't give up quite yet. Um, Councilmember Porterfield. All right, uh, Councilmember Holloway, thank you. All right, so um, Councilmember Sledge, you're recognized. Since we're still on the deferral motion, I suppose that could that motion could be withdrawn by the motion maker, but a point of order being, we still gotta vote, right? Even if we have, we still gotta get that person 21 votes? That's right. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, and now we actually, I think, have to do this by, um, can we do this one? This is on rule 48. Oh, hold on. Hold on. So we're looking at... Um, you. 
table do most. It would just be you and me, and we would have talked for five seconds, and we would have been. That's what we expected. I didn't want. I didn't want her to think I was like doing it religiously or anything. So uh, we double checked. How's it going? How's it going? Go back to you. This is our phone. Hey, let's just re-vote then. Yeah. Let's just re-vote with those two on the ballot. Uh, Councilman Murphy, um, recognizing you, you're on a motion to defer. I would like to withdraw my motion, okay. and so we can continue to vote uh, tonight on the final candidate. All right. So, um, Councilman Murphy is withdrawing her um, her motion to defer, um, and so now um, with the we were down to two candidates with one withdrawing. Or uh, I need a motion. Uh, to accept um, uh, Shannon Sanders for the last position Second. available. So um, who made the motion? Councilmember Johnston makes the motion, properly seconded. Any discussion? Yeah, Councilmember Rutherford. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. D would that not mean that we elevate the next highest person so we're voting on two? I, I, w the way I looked at it was that we, um, we were down to the final two candidates. And um, it was a tie vote, and one decided at that point that we that they dropped out, which left the other candidates still sitting there. Which means that, um, to me, it means that we were down to two, and and one dropped out, which meant the other one was left sitting there, and we could take a motion to elect them unanimously. Okay. He, uh, we had already gotten to the point where um, the candidate, who was Mr. Olive. Um, Make sure I've got his name right. Uh, Thomas Oliverio had had no longer was no longer in the contest, so that's why I think we just stick with the two. We are now down to one, and that's what we're voting on. Uh, you're welcome to overrule, and we can put them back in if you want, or we can just proceed ahead. Okay, but at this point, I think the ruling from the chair is that we are down to final two. One dropped out. We are just now voting for the approval of Mr. Sanders for the last seat on the commission. That's what's before us right now. It's a motion to approve. We can do it by voice vote. Any other discussion on here? I've got people on the board, but if you have discussions, let me know. Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm really kind of disappointed that we have come to this particular place um, considering that Shannon Sanders already serves on the Nashville Conventions and Visitors Corporation Board. Uh, and we have a former council member who is willing and stepped up to serve. And when we use petty politics to, um, to um, decide on, on, on the things that we're going to do as opposed to us being uh, completely fair in our evaluations, it, in, in my opinion, I, I think that it doesn't speak uh, well of us to ensure that we are doing the best thing in the interest of those that we serve. And it's just uh, disappointing for me. Okay. Uh, uh, now, remember, we're, all we're doing is voting on, um, it's just a voice vote on the selection of Mr. Sanders. So I've got hands up. Councilmember Stiles, just... Um, 
Which Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to clarify that Mr. Sanders has already said that he will step down from his other board to fill this okay. position. All right. Oh. Again. Okay. Oh, all right. I got Council Member Sledge. Previous question. Previous question. All right, we're voting on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. We are voting a voice vote on the selection of Mr. Shannon Sanders uh, for a seat on this commission. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Mr. Sanders is confirmed. Okay. We are now on um, item F, proposed rule amendment. Uh, it is proposed amendment to rule 28 of Metropolitan Council Rules of Procedure. Um, Council Member Murphy, you recognize for a proposed rule change. Thank you. I'm gonna defer this for one meeting. Okay, this is moved um, one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no, uh, deferred one meeting. Uh, we're on public comment period. It's my understanding that there were no uh, no individuals that signed up tonight. Um, so um, we move on from public comment. We are now on um, resolutions on public hearing. Um, I believe uh, Ms. Day Ruiz is here. If you would come to the back microphone and let people know that you are available for uh, uh, Spanish translation services. Good evening. My name is Sandra. I will be your Spanish interpreter. Voy a ser su interpreter en español para la sesión de esta noche. Gracias. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have. Um uh, we have nine items on resolutions on public hearing. For those of you who are here for that, here's how that works. I'm gonna call up the resolutions. Um, uh, actually, um, we're gonna group um, items two through nine. They're all by Council Member Taylor. We're gonna take them all at the same time. The first one is by Council Member Roberts. Um, I am going to call up those resolutions. Ask for a show of hands of those who are here in favor of the resolution. Ask for a show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the resolution. If you want to speak, either for or against, if you would come to that back microphone, um, you need to give us your, your name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Um, I'll do it for those who are in favor first and then those who are in opposition. After that, I will close the public hearing and refer back to the sponsor. All right, so the first one up is RS 2023-2236 by Council Member Roberts. It's a resolution, resolution exempting 5918 Morrow Road, uh, uh, number 200 from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a short-term rental property, non-unoccupied permit. Council Member Roberts, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. All right, I've got uh, planning and zoning. Council Member Withers. We recommended approval. I'm trying to recall what our number was. Hang on just a moment, please. 10 in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, government operations. Council Member Benedict. Sorry, Vice Mayor. That's okay. We're on 2020, sorry, 2236. 2236. Thank you. The um, committee voted five in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Councilor Roberts, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open up uh, the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this resolution. All right, a show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this resolution. I don't see anybody in opposition. Uh, would you like to speak in favor? This is your moment to shine, and we're not even voting on you. Well, we will in a minute, I guess, in the resolution. Um, you're welcome to speak. You don't have to, though. All right. Doesn't look like she's coming up. Close the public hearing. Councilman Roberts. I'd like to move for approval, please. All right. Councilman Roberts has moved for approval of RS 2023 2236, properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. Opposed, no. A resolution is adopted. All right. <clears throat> Without objection, we're going to take items two through nine, all at the same time for public hearing. Um, 
and then we'll, um, we can take them all together. We just have to vote on each resolution. Um, item number two is RS 2023-2237 by Council Member Taylor. Uh, it's a resolution exempting 217 24th Avenue North, uh, number 101 from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a short-term rental property, non-owner occupied permit. Item number three, RS 2023-2238 by Council Member Taylor. The same address, it's item, it's address um, or number 102. Um, item number four by council member Taylor, RS 2023, 2239. It's exempting the same property, 217 24th Avenue North, but it's it's number 103. Item number five is by council member Taylor, RS 2023, 2240. A resolution exempting 217 24th Avenue North, number 104. Item number six by council member Taylor, RS 2023, 2241. Uh, exempting the same property, 217 24th Avenue North, but this one is um, number 20. RS 2023 2242, item number seven on your calendar by Council Member Taylor. Same address, but a different number, different unit number, number 202. RS 2023 2243 by Council Member Taylor, unit. 203 and item number number nine RS 2023 2244 by Council Member Taylor resolution exempting 217 24th Avenue North uh, unit number 204 from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a short term rental property non owner occupied permit. Um, so Council Member Taylor, we are on, on all eight of your resolutions. You are recognized. Are you please open the public hearing. Got a couple of committee reports first. Council Member Withers on planning and zoning. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning met, and we recommended approval of all of these uh, 10 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. And Councilor Benedict on all eight. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The committee met, and we uh, did not make a recommendation on these. Okay. All right. So we've got a, a, at least one committee report in. Council Member Taylor, you're recognized on all eight of your resolutions. Thank you. I would like to open the public hearing. Okay. To clear the public hearing open. Um, so I would like to see a show of hands of those who are here on any of the eight in favor of those resolutions. Okay, I've got one hand up on any of them. Uh, show of hands uh, of those who are here in opposition to any of the resolutions. Seeing none, uh, would you like to speak, sir? All right, so I'm gonna declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Taylor, you are recognized on all eight of your resolutions. Thank you, move for approval. All right, Council Member Taylor has moved for approval of all eight of the resolutions. Again, 2237, 2238, 2239, 2240, 2241, 2242, 2243, and 2244. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion on any of the resolutions? Council Member Cash, you're recognized. Thanks, I just wanna make sure I understand. So this is a property that is zoned where it can uh, house non-owner occupied short-term rental properties. We're not changing that. It's just that it's too close to something. Is that correct? Council Member Taylor, you're recognized. Hey, yeah, this is uh, about a block away from the um, sportsplex in Centennial Park. So the sportsplex is giving it the reasons to have the um, the waiver. But otherwise, it would allow non-owner occupied short-term That's correct. Rental. So. Both the zoning and the policy would allow for nine owner occupied. Thank, thank you. That's all I understand. All right, Councilmember Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'm, I'm hoping I can get some information simply because I have um, dealt with a situation where there were eight separate owners next to uh, a residential area, and when uh, when the neighbor was disturbed because one of the units was loud, it was very difficult to know who the manager was to call and ask for um, for the situation to be resolved. Uh, and so since this one is across from the sportsplex, which is where it, it, at least the city meet happens and lots of kids are sitting there, I, I just would uh, like to have some information on if there ever is a situation where, where a manager needs to be called, is there a way to know which manager to call? Councilman Taylor. So I think we could look at the record of property. Um, and look at who owns the property and give that person a call. So, it's one, it's Mayor, it's one owner to council member. So yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's my, is there, is there something in the, uh, in the, in the deed restriction that guarantees it will always be one owner or could you be in a situation where there are okay. eight different, eight different managers? I just know it becomes very difficult to know who to call when you're, when you have eight different owners. So are, is there protection for that? 
I'm not sure if we can do that. I think we can ask for clarity from Darby. Ms. Darby. And each uh, each unit would have to have its own permit and that permit would indicate who the owner is. And uh, if these units are condominiums, then those presumably can be sold to other individuals. And if they uh, decide to pursue a permit, then their name would be on that permit as well. Or in Councilor Mary Allen. Thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll just say in, in general, I, I th think most of these worked out just great. I just happen to know that this puts puts folks in a really tricky situation just with regard to being able to call for help. So I'm a little nervous about this one. All right, thank you. Thank you, and I'll go to say there's about four hotels around this area as well um, already, so. And hotels uh, have managers. <laughs> the hotels do have managers. Uh, but this is an area where um, we, we see this as uh, Councilmember Cash has um, its zone and approved for it uh, through policy and zoning. Um, and so um, with being the sportsplex, we generally don't have um, it, the sportsplex. I would equate that very similar to another uh, space that would be commercial that would be able to have this opportunity if it wasn't commercial and if it wasn't a city operated park. Uh, so I felt uh, uh, compelled to be able to help this gentleman. Thank you. Councilman Roberts. I would just like to be recuse myself, please. Okay, Councilman Roberts will be um, uh, will, um, abstaining from the vote. All right, anybody else? Anybody else on this one? All right, we'll try this by voice vote. The motion is to approve RS 2023-2237 all the way through RS 2023-2244, properly seconded. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, do you wanna vote no? Okay, so um, without objection, we're gonna record Councilmember Allen as a no. Any objection? And, and a, one abstention, okay? All right, so the the, um, the motion passes with one negative vote and uh, council member uh, Roberts abstaining, all right? All right, all right, so we are now on page seven. Um, we're on consent resolutions and resolutions now. Because we have the budget, um, unless there are any objections, we're gonna move the following items to the front of the agenda. Uh, these are the items and this is the order that we're gonna call them up. Um, there are seven of them, so I'll go through them twice, all right? Uh, the first item up will be item number 16 on your calendar, on your agenda. Uh, that is um, item 16, RS 2023-2247. Um, that's the resolution appropriating certain accounts uh, to the sheriff's office, all right? The second item we would call up uh, would be item 90, which is the operations budget. Item number three would be item 91, which is the tax levy. Item number four called up would be item 92, that's the ordinance that creates a number of positions. Item number five, uh, or, or number five would be item number 10, which is the new pay plan for the general employees. Item number six, uh, or number six would be item number 11, which is the pay plan for the police and the fire department. <coughs> And then seven would be item 12, which is the pay plan for the health department. Let me go through those again so you've got them. Uh, we would call up these seven right now. Council member Roten. Here, call out, could you call out the resolution or the bill numbers, please? Sure, so right. uh-huh, okay. So the first item we would call up would be number 16, RS 2023, 2247. It is on page nine of my agenda, okay? Second item we would call up would be item number 90, which is BL 2023-1867. That's the operations budget. It's on page 34 of my agenda. The next item, uh, number three, would be item number 91, BL 2023-1868. That's the tax levy, okay? Uh, next item up would be item number 92, BL 2023-1873. That's the ordinance that creates a number of positions. Item or number five would be item number 10, which is RS 2023-2196. Okay, that's the pay plan, the new pay plan uh, for the general employees of the Metropolitan Government. 
Number six, item number 11, RS 2023-2197. Uh, that's the pay plan for the police and fire department. That's on page seven of my agenda. And then the, the, uh, the last one we would call up out of order, number seven, would be item number 12, RS 2023-2198. That's the resolution, new pay plan for employees of the Metropolitan Board of Health. Any objection to that? Seeing none, without objection, we're calling up uh, item number 16, okay? Uh, it is RS 2023-2247. Again, that's the first one up. RS 2023-2247. Uh, Council Member Roten and Bradford are the sponsors. Resolution appropriating a certain accounts for the benefit of the Davidson County Sheriff's Office, the amount of $4,300,000. Uh, dollars. Council Member Roten, you are recognized on the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval and uh, have a late filed substitute on that. Okay, so let's get your committee report in first on that resolution. Budget and finance, you're recognized. Your budget and finance um, approved 15 in favor, zero against, and they approved the late filed substitute 15 in favor, zero against. All right, so uh, Council Member Roten is uh, moving a late file substitute resolution, correct? That is correct. And uh, did it go to the Rules Committee? Uh, Council Member Murphy? Late file. Okay. I think I'm gonna have to spend the rules on this one. I don't think we went to the... Oh, you probably never got over there. Because, I, I didn't yeah. have a chance to go, so... All right, we so... We took care of it. I think Council Member Murphy had- Council Member Murphy, this is item number 16 on the agenda. It's RS 2023-2247. She had signed on to a budget amendment that was gonna go over there, but we this is a separate um, item, I believe, that she never got signed on to. So we're gonna just have to suspend the rules and I'll let Council explain what this is. All After right. I no, it went system. through, it went through. Did it? Okay. We only had the late filed. We only did emergency 13, rule 13. Actually, well, you would never know. Okay, so, um, so Councilman Murphy, you're saying that this was approved to proceed ahead. Correct. We do not have an objection with the late filed nature. All right, Councilman Roten, uh, you're going to need to suspend the rules. I move to suspend the rules. All right, Councilmember Roten is moving to suspend the rules to get a late filed uh, substitute resolution before us on this resolution. Any objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, rules were suspended. Councilman Roten, you're on your late file uh, substitute resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, this is um, a late filed substitute, which is adding, I believe it's 6.5 million um, to this resolution regarding uh, some safety measures for uh, Metro schools. Um, if um, Council Member Roberts would stop talking to Council, I could ask her to explain exactly what we're doing here. It's a good thing you did that uh, after you got the rule suspension. <laughs> All right, Director Darby, you're recognized. <laughs> this is uh, a substitute uh, resolution. It adds to the supplemental appropriation um, $6.5 million to be appropriated to schools for purposes of, um, although it doesn't say the purposes in it, the purpose of, it, of the appropriation was to um, provide them with some funding to, to get safety glass and radios. Um, so it would increase the total amount of the supplemental appropriation to 10800000 and uh, I'd like to renew my motion on the late filed substitute. All right, so Councilman uh, Roten has uh, moved um, um, for passage a late filed substitute resolution on RS 2023-2247, properly seconded. Discussion on the late filed substitute resolution. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're on the late filed substitute resolution. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the resolution is adopted. You're on your resolution as substituted, Councilman Roden. Renew my motion. All right, so Councilman Roden is moving RS 2023-2247 as substituted for passage, properly seconded. Any discussion on this resolution? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of RS 2023-2247 as substituted for passage say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this one is adopted. All right, the next item up, uh, we are on item number 90. 
which is on page 34 of my calendar. It is BL 2023-1867. This is the budget ordinance of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County for fiscal year 2024. Council Member Roden, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval and move the substitute. All right, so Council Member Roden is moving approval. Uh, properly seconded. I need, uh, uh, let's start with um, the overall committee report and then we'll take up the amendments one by one. Okay. The overall committee report on the substitute budget was 15 in favor, zero against. Okay. All right, Council Member Roten, um, um, I guess we need to be on your substitute. That is correct. Move I, the I would like to move the substitute. All right. So Council Member Roten is moving the substitute properly seconded. Um, and then we'll start picking up the amendments and then we'll go back and, and pass the substitute as amended uh, or not pass the substitute as amended, whatever the council wants to do. All right. So uh, we are on uh, proposed. Um, we, are, we are on the substitute and we're going to pick up these amendments one by one. Uh, proposed amendment number one is uh, on BL 2023 1867 is by Council Member Mendes and Roten. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. Uh, Vice Mayor, this one will only be moved if the substitute for some reason is not adopted. Okay. So at this time, I won't move it. All right. So you're going to hold on to this one. All right. Um, proposed amendment number two uh, on BL 2023 1867 is by Council Member Porterfield. Uh, Council Member Porterfield, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Is this uh, amendment number two, the this Planned Parenthood? Amendment number two. Um, my apologies, Vice Mayor. Do, do I need to uh, ask for a committee report? Uh, yeah, you need to ask for a committee report. Committee report, please. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance uh, approved 15 in favor, zero against. Okay. Thank Councilman you. Porterfield. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, this, uh, this amendment is to, uh, this is the, the amendment. This is for what we already passed with Planned Parenthood, and this is just giving us the ability to extend to uh, spend the money in fiscal year 24, and I would uh, ask that my colleagues support, so I move for approval. All right, Councilman Porterfield has moved for approval of amendment number two to be of 2023-1867, properly seconded discussion on the amendment. All right, no discussion. We're voting on amendment number two. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Amendment number two. Um, amendment number two is adopted. Councilman Roten, uh, you're on your substitute now as amended. Uh, we are on proposed amendment number three by Council Member Toombs. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, committee report. Council Member um, Roten. Budget and finance approved 15 in favor, zero against. Uh, Council Member Toombs. Move for approval with a brief explanation. Okay, so Council Member Toombs has moved for approval of amendment number three, properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the amendment. So amendment number three just uh, clarifies the language in the substitute regarding the $2 million in surplus funds to Metro Arts, uh, just changes it so that it's not restricted to capital projects. All right, so you've heard the explanation of amendment number three, and it's been properly moved, properly seconded. Any discussion on amendment number three? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of, of amendment number three say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, amendment number three is adopted. Okay, um, we are now on amendment number four. Uh, that's by Council Member Sledge and Roten. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report. Uh, Council Member Roden. Budget and finance approved. 15 in favor, zero against. Okay. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval with a brief explanation. <laughs> All right. So Council Member Sledge has moved amendment number four properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation. Thank you, Vice Mayor. This takes the $2.8 million that's um, allocated in this substitute to fully fund better bus, and it makes sure that it can be used for operating funds. So what you'll see in that amendment is using the Barnes Fund as a bridge, um, essentially taking 2.8 million out of the operating budget side of Barnes and putting that into the WeGo amount, and then taking that 2.8 that was going to be that was in the one-time surplus from Better Bus and putting that into Barnes. The thing I want to emphasize here is that not one is not one penny less in the Barnes Fund. It is still 30 million allocated between the operating budget and the one-time surplus. The important thing here is that WeGo is able to have that 2.8 million in operating dollars 
they can use it for the intention of the Better Bus Program, um, which is the crosstown route expansion. Um, I want to thank Chair Roten and the Finance Department and Director Bland and Director Hubbard for all working with me on this, and I would renew my motion for approval. Okay, so you've heard the, uh, the motion and the explanation. Uh, this is number four, amendment number four. It's been properly moved, properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. We're on amendment number four. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment number four is uh, passed. Okay, we are now on uh, number five. Amendment number five is by Council Member Syracuse, um, Sawara, Pulley, and Roten. Uh, Council Member Syracuse. Withdraw. All right, so Council Member Syracuse is withdrawing uh, amendment number five. All right. Uh, we are now on uh, amendment number six by council member Welsh, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I would like to withdraw with a brief comment. All right, council member Welsh is withdrawing uh, amendment number six, uh, you're recognized. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, you know, I feel like I've had to say this year after year. Um, we prioritize MNPD over everything else in this city, all under the guise of public safety. And I also say every year, there's more to public safety than just policing. Um, but that seems to be the only thing that ever really counts. I mean, they get whatever they want. In my, in my term, at every budget session, they have gotten every funding request. Nothing has been denied. MNPD got huge percentage of ARP funding. They got an entire new fleet and new tasers out of that. We just passed $34 million for repairs and maintenance for all of Metro, of which 10% went to MNPD. MNPD is getting all of the same Metro raises that everyone else is getting under this particular budget. Um, they, they're set. If we held their budget flat this year, they're not gonna have undue harm, but every other agency and department in this in this government does. The arts, um, everything, just all those lifelines, the library, all the things for mental health and well-being that got us through COVID, we just ignore them. We even ignore the other leg of public safety. Fire and EMS are way underfunded, despite the fact that all of us are more likely to have an, uh, an interaction with fire and EMS than MNPD. They're the first responders, first responders. They show up everywhere, and they do their job without everything they need, without the funding they need and the equipment they need. And because of that, because they always show up and they're consistent and they do their job well, we don't even pay attention to what they're lacking. In my district, a fire station has been lacking a ladder truck for over two months, which means if the high rise in my district goes up, they can't go and save the people up top. We haven't had a new fire station built since 2001, despite hundreds of thousands of new residents. This is ridiculous. We have got to change the way we look at this city and what is important and what really makes an impact on the quality of life with people. I, it, it's just really difficult to constantly hear that we can't take money from there and expect everybody to wait and to wait and to wait. We, we're not paying people enough. We're ignoring those other things that give us quality of life. And if we don't change our path pretty soon, we're gonna be nothing but a police state and playground for the rich. Thank you. So uh, council member uh, Welsh has withdrawn uh, amendment number six. All right, we are on amendment number seven. Council Member Welsh, um, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would like to withdraw the rest of all of my amendments. All right, so that's uh, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 10, number 11, number 12, uh, and number 13. So they're all withdrawn. All right, we are on amendment number 14 by Council Member Suara and Porterfield. Council Member Suara, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor, coming to reports, please. Uh, Council Member Roten, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance um, did not recommend approval. Four in favor, seven against, one abstention. Okay, uh, thank you. Council Member Suara, you're recognized. I'd like to move for approval with comments. All right, so I got a, a motion to approve properly seconded. You're on your amendment. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I want to start with the prayer that we had today by Reverend White. Uh, part of the prayer talk about making sure that we honor the history of black that have faced degradation. And as he was praying, I remember the history of the Morris Building as a site where blacks were sold in this city. Uh, but what was sad about it is that sometimes that story is not being told or even forgotten. 
But what is also impressive about the Morris Building is that the grandchildren, great-grandchildren of the people that were slaves sold on that block came together to build that building. It became the orb of black businesses, black architects, black construction, black insurance, everything by the black people. When you look in Wikipedia, I will tell you that that was the epicenter of the black district. We don't have the black district anymore. We don't have the businesses on Jefferson due to I-40. And so there is a movement, there has been a movement for many years by so many people, so many people in the past, Ashley Warren, everybody, uh, Sharon, a lot of people that have been trying to work on a, on a uh, civil rights museum. But every time we come to it, one thing that's been a block is the building itself. When Woodward became available, some people came together, tried to do that as well. Couldn't make it happen until somebody bought it again. So we got a word that the National Convention, Baptist Convention, is willing to cut the price in half if we're ready to move from 12 million to 6 million. This is a great deal for that place. And this is a place that will be used not just for the museum, but also as a biz offices for Metro. So as I was thinking about what to say to all of you, I was telling Councilman Berlin that it reminds me of something we do in Leadership Nashville called the poverty line. When you're at the poverty line, it seems as if for some people, especially minority, every time you try to move ahead, the line got moved. Every time you get closer to the line, something happened. That's what this feels like. Because every time we're trying to do something with this building, something happened. Somebody put it on the back burner. Somebody wants to wait till later. Some of the uh, things that I've heard, uh, we said that we do not want to touch hearts. So there is a late amendment that put the money back in arts. People said, no, they do not like the funding source. It should go to the PSP. Well, we have in this a chair substitute, the never reserve building, a school for the blind, that are taken out of the PSP that are funded this way. Then somebody said, what about uh, the, the, the uh, Finance director talk about maintenance costs to be about 500,000. There is a movement by people to raise money, but another thing that I want folks to understand is that this place has 35,000 spaces, square footage that can be used as offices. And when you take the cost of renting at maybe about $36 per square foot, that is 1.2 million of rents that we will be paying instead of the 500 uh, that is being put together as uh, maintenance. We talk about the 4%. This budget does not cut the 4% below the 4%. It's only moving it around, and we're still gonna be able to fund the 4% at 49 million. We talk about facility rate. I hope somebody will yield their time to me so I can finish this thought, Thank because you, I think it's very important. All right, Council Member Benedict, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I appreciate the sponsor bringing this, and I voted in favor of it on committee, and I'm gonna vote in favor of it here on the floor. Um, in particular, I'm thinking about the fact that this, the sponsor of this amendment has negotiated the price of this property down to $6 million, and it has been reported significantly higher than that in the past. People have said 40 million, 28 million, we now have the opportunity to make a land purchase with a historic building on it for all the reasons that the sponsor just said. Um, and it's a bargain price for us to buy this. We buy land, we bought the Global Mall. We didn't have any operating budget for taking care of the operational expense for that so far as I can tell. And we bought the mall. We bought um, the, the 88 Hermitage Avenue. We bought it at a price that was significantly higher than what it would have been if we would have originally bought it when, when we could have. This is an opportunity for us to purchase something that is not just historic, but is also an, a great deal for us to purchase. And I think it's an opportunity that we need to take to, um, uh, uh, to make sure that we are honoring the history that's been spoken about. I think we need to do more um, in that regard, and I'd like to yield the rest of my time to Council Member Suara. Okay. Council Member Suara, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The point I was trying to make with the um, facility renter that was pointed out in budget, uh, when I talked to Meharry, the Meharry payment is due on July. So the payment for FY23 will not be paid until July. The one for FY24 will not be paid until 2025. But that's not just the only thing. The, the finance director shared with us that since we put this budget together, we've been able to find additional funding of 6.5 million that we were able to use for the school security, that the revenue is coming in more than projected. And so we're still waiting for another month or two of revenue that we haven't put in. So this one million is gonna be there. If we can find 6.5, we're gonna find it. 
So I'm, I'm putting it to you that this is just a matter of what is important to us. This is a matter of what we think our priority should be. People can come up with all the excuses and all the reasons. Like I said, we've done other things, even in this budget, with all the reasons that we're giving. And I'm saying that for the first time, let's do this for this community. There's a lot of momentum. There's a public concert coming up with public-private uh, partnership that will support this building. The P, uh, CIB is in there for the renovation. I've had two or three mayoral candidates commit that they're willing to, to do the renovation if they get elected. So all of that is there, but we have to have the building first. We have to buy the building, and at $6 million, $6 million. Six million dollars. I'm sure finance director can find it. Um, but I try to come up with all the numbers as best as I can. It's not taking away from banks. It's not taking away from four percent. It's not taking away from everything. Everything is there. So I'm asking all of you. This is a matter of priority. This is a matter of sending the message that don't kick it down the road again. The talk of the museum, the Morris Building has been on for a long time. Let's just stop doing that. How come the poverty line keep moving? How come when it comes to black and brown stuff, we have to keep delaying it? I'm hoping that you will do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Johnston, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, I really do appreciate the um, the passion that Council Member Suara, um shows, and I think um, that the Morris Building would be a good acquisition if we could figure, if we had a plan to renovate and mitigate, which is millions of dollars. I think um, we said 38 million, is that what someone said? $43 million. So the, the, the $6 million purchase, number one, is, is, is probably not a problem. The funding source that's being proposed here is a problem. Multiple things. We're pulling from the Barnes Fund, I don't think um, is appropriate not the Barnes Fund, well, the 4% fund, which um, again is, we, we said this in budget multiple times, it's the 4% fund is never enough for what our departments need and what those requests are. And they, the administration gave us a great um, rundown of the 4% fund and what the needs are and, and what we're able to do. That's important to multiple departments. We're hearing from the library a lot, but the 4% fund is just not the place to pull it, to pull money from. If we're gonna purchase a building, we need to have the money and the plan in place in order to not only purchase it, but to mitigate whatever the asbestos or lead, whatever it is, to renovate, to get it to where it, it is usable. And while that may be in the CIB, it still is not funded. I think it's a good project. Um, I, I caution on how we have purchased several things in this term, the Global Mall, which is still sitting there, 88 Hermitage Avenue, which is still sitting there. Would this just be another asset that sits there that, that needs a, an extraordinary amount of, of renovation with costs that are, that are out of bounds? I think it's a beautiful building. I hope we can figure it out. And I think that there is the will to figure it out. This is just not the appropriate um, place to pull money from, um, and I, th I think we can do better and have a better plan in place for this building. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Gamble. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I share Council Member Sorara's uh, passion and, and support for the need to save the Morris Building and use it as a, a public facility. However, I can't support this amendment because it takes funding from the 4% fund. It also would take funding uh, for from facility rental, which we cont contractually can't even do. So that's another million dollars uh, in this amendment that actually cannot be used uh, to fund this purpose. The Morris Building is in the CIB. Uh, f which includes right now $28 million, which would go towards the purchase of the building as well as the uh, repair of the building, which at, at latest count is estimated to be about $44 million. And, and from my understanding, that's why the cost of the sale of the purchase of the building has gone down because the, the cost to repair the building is, is so enormous. So I hope that we will continue this discussion and look at uh, the, a more prudent way approach to purchase and support uh, the repair of this building. Uh, however, unfortunately, I don't think this is, is the right approach and for those reasons, I can't support it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Council Member, Council Member Hart. 
Yes, I stand in support. Where our heart is is where our treasure is. And for us to be less than 24 hours of celebrating Juneteenth, where they had a celebration at the Nashville Zoo, which used to be a site for the African-American community, but it no longer is now, it is the Nashville Zoo. The same zoo that we spent $15 million for a new parking lot. I think this is an opportunity for us to show that we celebrate the amazing history that we have here in this city with African Americans. It is time for us to stop tolerating black people and celebrate them. That building, I've been working with Pastor Greer and others for at least six years in trying to get that building renovated, purchased. We thought that Mayor Browley was going to purchase the building, but we keep getting empty promises. This is an opportunity for us to really show those who want to have a public-private partnership that the government, that the city is willing to put skin in the game. Booker T. Washington was one of the founders of the National Publishing Board, and his picture is there. It is rich. There are amazing carvings of architect throughout the building, an original clock from when that building was built still works. The elevators are still there. It is beautiful. It is a sanctuary. And to think about the fact that we have Diane Nash Plaza, the witness walls, the Morris Building on MLK Boulevard, adjacent to John Lewis Way, Rosa Parks, and we take this down to the African American Museum, is an amazing walking tour celebrating the culture in this community. As Councilmember Suara indicated that this is the community, Cedar Street, that used to be for the black community. Citizens Bank had a building there, and, and we have nothing there to show for the amazing history. It is time for us to step up and put some money where our mouths are. All right, thank you, Councilmember. Uh, Councilmember Porterfield. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. I rise in support of this amendment as a co-sponsor of the amendment. And uh, before I get into it, I wanna talk a little bit about the history of the building. Um, the five-story building was designed by the prominent black-owned architectural firm of McKissick and McKissick and construction for the National Baptist Convention, an African-American Christian denomination. The Baptist Sunday School Publishing Board, McKissick & McKissick, Citizen Savings Bank and Trust Company, and Atlanta Insurance Company's natural location were all housed there. This is a building that is very significant to the African American community, and this is one of the last pieces of uh, historical buildings in downtown Nashville. This is our opportunity to purchase it. I wanna thank um, uh, Davy Tucker with the Human Rights Commission, uh, who was able to negotiate down the sale price of this building from 12 million down to 6 million. Um, I understand the concerns about the renovation costs, but this is a public-private partnership. I also want to make sure that we highlight the ability to uh, recuperate some of the revenue uh, from this particular building. Um, based on what we heard earlier, it's going to cost 500000 a year to manage the building, but Metro would immediately start saving money when the departments utilize the office space in the Morris Building. So the intent is to have not only a civil rights museum uh, in, that, uh, in that building, but also to use a lot, utilize Metro office space. So right now, the current average cost is $36 per square foot that Metro will be paying for the lease on 2nd Avenue with 35,000 square feet, that's 1.26 million a year and a savings of seven, uh, 700,000 per year. And we can do that while we're subsidizing space for African American History Museum, giving a strong opportunity for success over time. Over 25 years, Metro will save millions of dollars um, 
and we are buying and uh, rehabbing this building while owning the asset of the building that will continue to increase in value, especially after it's rehabbed. The last thing that I want to say, Vice Mayor, is um, I'm, I didn't grow up in Nashville. I'm originally from Memphis, and when I moved here and I went to TSU, I often heard these stories about when the interstate came through um, Jefferson Street and what it did to tear up the black community and the businesses in Jefferson Street, and a lot of people think that that's unique here in Nashville. Well, a couple of years ago, uh, right before the pandemic, we went to the National League of Cities, and there was a, um, a uh, exhibit on redlining, and uh, what I learned there was that this is something that happened across the country where interstates were put in and tore up historical communities. This gives us the opportunity, and this may be the last opportunity, to buy a building with this level of historical reverence in the black community. And our history is Nashville's history. The civil rights history is Nashville's history. We deserve to have this history told. We have a late filed amendment that will replenish the money for the arts. I'm asking my colleagues to please support this. Thank All right, you. thank you, Council Member. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm gonna, I guess, maybe do something a little unusual. I'm not gonna ask colleagues to support this because I think it's a tough request in terms of the funding sources, but I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna support it. Um, I was on the uh, Morris Memorial Building Study Committee four years ago uh, that recommended to the Briley administration that we purchase this building. And I'll read you the letter that we sent at that time to the Briley administration. I was chaired by Reverend Greer. It is a historical treasure and a vital remnant of the rich history of the city's black business district. For these reasons, we strongly request you continue to pursue purchasing and preserving the building by working with the NBC to extend the option period to the fall. We strongly advocate for it to be used for its original purpose as an opportunity to highlight and honor the Black Business District and the original Morris Memorial Building itself. Uh, and this is a building that uh, should be preserved and that doesn't just mean the land. So I wanna be careful about this because just buying it is not a guarantee of preservation. Uh, you can buy and demolish. We see people do that in this city all the time. Uh, if this amendment fails, uh, I am happy to commit to working with Council Member Suara and any of the other sponsors and supporters on a completely free tool, which is landmarking the building. Uh, that actually has the uh, short-term impact of starting the preservation process and allowing us to work through whatever public and or private partnership would work. But I still stand by the spirit of the letter I co-signed and I will be supporting the amendment. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Sepulveda. <clears throat> thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, and I do wanna thank Council Member Suara for bringing this amendment. Um, I had a couple of notes from listening in on the committee meeting, um, parking was brought up. Um, I do wanna commend Council Member Sledge for uh, just recently bringing uh, parking legislation before us um, to make parking maximums, uh, parking um, minimums the maximum. And um, my colleague, uh, Council Member Porterfield did point out that our garage is right down the street. So <laughs> I, I, I think there are ample opportunities to ride a bike, walk to this place, take the bus and I and I want to I want us to remember that we have been pushing for more transit options and I don't think that should be an argument. Um, I want to highlight that 21 council members signed on to a letter saying that this was a priority and over the weekend I had the privilege of speaking on a panel regarding the Morris building and there I sat at a table with a former council member from the 90s uh, who was telling me that um, during his time, they put some money into Fort Negley um, to clear away some of the brush. And he said people couldn't get to it at that point. And then later on, other council bodies came aboard and did more to the site. And I think we have that opportunity here before us today. Um, and there are other groups fundraising as well. It's not like we're getting stuck with the entire bill. Um, people need to see themselves in Nashville. And when we live in a state where history is suppressed or erased, uh, we can't afford to forget our own here. And I said this on the panel, when I speak to kids, when I get invited to schools and I speak to kids, 
I tell them, um, learn your history and learn how your people contributed to this country because you, you might start to think that this place was not meant for you. And I think that we as a body need to remember that we are Nashville and the black community is Nashville and this is our history and historians shouldn't have to go all the way to DC to get more information about what happened here in our city and that's what historians were saying. So I think that we need to come together as a body. We have a great opportunity now where uh, it has been negotiated um, to have the price and our communities shouldn't be forgotten. So I, I, I would ask you all to support this uh, amendment, the substitute. Thank you, Council Member Taylor, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, this is a great opportunity for Nashville tonight. Uh, we can support the Morris Building. Uh, we just celebrated Juneteenth, um, and this is, we're talking about black history uh, that we can see, that we can touch, that we can feel. And um, we can we can do that and we can create that history and keep that history alive here in Nashville. Um, it, I'm looking to kind of see who's behind me and um, being that uh, Council Member Swope is behind me, I wanna yield the rest of my time to Council Member Swore, who is after that, so thank you. Council Member Swore. Thank you, Council Member Taylor. Um, I think I've said a lot. Um, this is a matter of political will. Uh, six million is not a lot. Uh, and like I said, we've done some things. All the things that I've heard tonight that says we cannot do it, we've done something similar in this budget, in this same budget. If we do the Naval Reserve Building, we do the School for the Blind the same way, took them out of the PSP, then we can do this too. So the funding mechanism is not something that is a problem. Uh, I want to say that the 4% fund, we were very careful to make sure that we did not dip below the 4% that is required. I know we will always say there will always be need. We will never have enough money. We have this conversation all the time. But I think it's a matter of what is important. What is the priority? What do we deem as very important? There's a, if you sign on to the letter and said the building is important, then this is an opportunity to do that. We get it, but then we, the, the, the next council, just like Chris said, when they did the clearing for the Fort Negley, the next council behind came and did more for Fort Negley. If we buy the building, then the next council and the next mayor, plus the community partnership, will look into the fixing of it. We cannot demolish it. We cannot make it into anything else. The only thing we can do is preserve it and to preserve the history that is in there, all the things that is there, uh, I think I'm hoping that you all will find it in your hearts to just, we can do this. We give the, 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 the administration the mandate that this is important to us, then we make it happen. But we have to send that message that this is something that we wanna do and I hope that this is the council that made the, real, uh, uh, the Morris Building a reality. There's been a lot of talk for a lot of years that make the Civil Rights Museum a reality, we lost World Wars because we're still talking about it and we couldn't get it together. Let's not let this happen again. Let's have, of all the cities in the South, everybody has a museum. With the history that we have in Nashville, all of that history is in different places. The, the, the library, the, the schools have some things. We need to have a place to house it for our children. More importantly, to tell the community that this city, this council cares about it enough to put six million behind it. Thank you. Council Member Swope. Thank you. Um, it, while I'm all for preserving Morris Building for exactly the reasons that everybody stated tonight, um, and, and I do believe in preserving our history for exactly that reason for historical purposes, I wonder if the way we're doing or the way we're going about this is the right way to do this. Um, before we start taking from the arts and the general fund for Barnes Fund and judgment and losses and the general fund, et cetera, et cetera, that's what it says right here. Um, I would like to get the administration and the finance department's viewpoint on this, if you don't mind commenting. Mr. Mr. Jameson. Thank you. Um, I think the 
main point Director Flannery would underscore is that the reliance on the facility rental fund is, is ineligible in this instance. Remember, the facility rental fund is the, is the fund that we rely upon for the Meharry contract that we entered into just this past fiscal year, but it is also the fund that we use to house several metro departments, including, ironically, the Human Relations Commission, the Community Oversight Board, the Public Defender's Office, the Metro Action Commission, the Social Services Department. So you're gonna gut them a million dollars? That, that is an ineligible funding source. The mayor is deeply enamored with the building and the answer tonight is not foreclosing the possibility of pursuing it. Pursue it through a capital spending plan. But when you do that, I would strongly recommend, we would all recommend a genuine study on whether or not the building can actually be implemented for Metro uses. Two years ago, the mayor spoke to us at length in his office and commissioned, headed by Fabian Bednay, with the responsibility for salvaging the building and determining what uses, what Metro uses it could be applied for. Mr. Bednay is a licensed architect. He uh, studied this building, dragged me through it, through a hot August day, and determined that the uh, environmental remediation costs were extremely significant. It is loaded with asbestos and lead paint. The renovation costs, the subject of an Ernst & Young study about a year later totaled $43 million, and that's over five years just to get it habitable. It has a height restriction, that sounds odd because it's surrounded by buildings that are taller, but under the downtown plan, it is under the James Robertson subdistrict, and you can't add stories to it, even if Metro Historic would be comfortable with that. It has no available parking that the code's requirement would require, and just to say, well, we'll just send people down the block, that's an additional cost that is not code compliant. Repurposing the building was attempted. Mr. Bedney looked to other industries that wouldn't rely upon parking. Uh, the, the hostel industry, hotel industry, absolutely zero interest. The first time we considered it, the, the purchase price of the building was well over 20 million. When we inspected it, it was 12 million. Now it's 6 million. I think that tells you something. So I think the better route is to do this through a capital spending plan. I would commission a study first to make sure you know what you're getting and go from there. Well, uh, typically we let people finish the question and answer it. So um, thank but, you. Uh, all right, thank you, Council Member Swope. Uh, Council Member Van Rees. Thank you very much. Um, for the eighth year in the row, I have to stand up um, for arts. Uh, I, I don't know how many people we've heard from about the importance, uh, the work that we did to make sure that this $2 million went to the capital grants. Uh, we've already passed an amendment to make sure that the, the uh, things like the Thrive Grants would qualify for it right now, 40% of the, um, 40%, 40% of the Thrive grants that are in queue are from BIPOC um, individuals. To, to, to concentrate on the history of our African-American population while, re, while removing the possibility for um, people of color to thrive through our system by using these funds uh, disturbs me. Um, I. I, I love this building. I, I, I love the history of the architect, and I think it's going to be something beautiful that the city figures out. But I do know that even purchasing the building and how long it will take to happen, this city will not see something for a long time. These funds, this coming year, they will see things happen in this year with these funds. Um, I'm also um, very concerned um, about the uh, the removal of funds for the uh, judgment and losses from the proposed budget. Um, we've already removed four and a half million dollars. Um, I think that leaves about two and a half uh, left in it. And uh, I, I think a, a liability claim, and the lawyers can remind me if this is accurate, it can go up to $3 million. So one horrible slip and fall, and we're already in, in trouble. And so I'm, I, I, I love the idea that you spent all this time to try to make this work and it, something does need to happen. 
but the funding that you've come up with is not something that I can live with. Um, I will uh, do everything I can to protect this funding for the arts, and I hope that my colleagues will do so as well. All right, thank you. Council Member Swar, you cannot, um, you've already spoken on this bill three times, and I've got people in the queue pursuant to the rules. I have to call on them first. Okay. Yeah, we've got people yelled at, I know, but that's three times. But according to the rules, I can't come back to you right away. Uh, Council Member Roten, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, as budget chair, uh, when I did the substitute, um, the Arts Commission was one of the main things that I got wish list items for. Um, I probably had 10, 11, 12 wish list uh, requesting money for the arts. Um, the facility rental, we have legal issues there if you're taking money from there. We have the 4% fund, which we've taken from there, and then if we start taking more, there's a lot more amendments on here that are taking from the 4%. Um, this, I think, could have been handled if it would have been given to us early in the process. I did not know the Morris Building was an issue until a day or two before I put out my substitute budget. That's when I got the wish list item for this. So that gives you a couple of days to actually look at this and all the funding sources we'd already used for other items that you all had wish list items for. So it, what it is here is you're taking from what everybody else has requested and we put in a lot of time trying to make sure everybody could get these things and now you're just gonna take it all for this one building that we have in a CIB and can be done in a CSP. So I would just ask that you um, realize that the financial source for this is not proper and in line with the substitutes budget. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Young. Previous question. Council Member Young has called the previous question. So we're, we're not voting on the amendment, we're voting on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed no. No. Previous question prevails. All right, uh, so we are, um, we'll do this on the board. Um, let me explain procedurally where we are. Obviously we're on the operations budget, BL 2023, 1867. Uh, this is amendment number 14 uh, by Council Member Sawara and Porterfield. Uh, they have moved it for passage. Uh, it was properly seconded. Um, if you're for the amendment, you would vote aye. If you're against it, you would vote no. All right, Mr. Clark. Let me know when you're ready. It's a simple majority on this one. Okay. All right, um, Mr. Clerk is ready. Uh, again, if you're for the amendment, you would vote aye. If you're against it, you vote no. Mr. Clerk, open up the machines. Okay, Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. Eyes 13, nose 24, one abstention, um, the amendment fails. Okay, we are now on amendment number 15. Uh, this is by Council Member Sawara and Council Member Evans. Uh, Council Member Sawara, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor, we'd like to withdraw that amendment. Okay, uh, 15 is withdrawn. Uh, item number 16 by Council Member Johnston, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, so we had a lot of discussion about the COLA. Um, I, Point of order. Oh, oh come, sorry, committee reports. Hadn't even gotten there yet. All right, Council Member Rotten, you're recognized for a committee report. Thank you, Mr. Fire, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, Budget and Finance uh, did not approve this amendment. Three in favor, eight against, one abstention. Okay, thank you. Councilman Johnston, you're recognized. Thank you, sorry. Um, so <laughs> when I was in management and when I owned my business, my job was to take care of my employees. My employees took care of the clients. You take care of the people that take care of you. And we have thousands of employees that come to work every single day that keep this city moving. And more and more I talk to them. Some have worked for a couple of years, some have worked for over 20 years. And, and there's, a lot, there's a lot of people that feel very under, undervalued and underappreciated. And so when we talk about um, recruiting and retention, um, part of 
part of that is 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 valuing our workforce. And so we have an extraordinarily high uh, inflation number this year. It's arguably 8% or 8.7%. Um, the Civil Service Commission recommended 7%. And I know we looked really hard at, at getting as much, and I, and I really appreciate the work of um, of, of Chair Roten and, and Vice Chair Gamble on, on trying to get as much as they could. I think we can do more. I personally couldn't get to the seven because um, the, the funding sources that we're looking at are, are you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul. It's just the, um, the sad reality of what our budget is. Um, but I do think that there are some departments that have um, operating budget increases, they have high numbers of vacancies, and they also return money back to the general fund each year. And so I would, so what I pulled from um, was small amounts from NDOT parks, waste, and general services, because my goal was to take a little bit that wouldn't hurt, that more than likely is gonna come back to us anyway, that we can invest back into our employees to make them feel valued, to let them know that we do appreciate what they do every single day for us as council members, that, that we call on them to fix our problems for our constituents, um, but, but just their jobs that they do every every single day. So it was very thoughtful um, on my part on on which departments to come from, again, I didn't want to hurt any one, in any one department or any department at all. I tried to take little slivers, which is why I could only come up with a half a percent. So I hope that um, you will support. All right, thank you. Okay, so Council Member Johnston has moved to approval of amendment number 16, properly seconded. I've got people in the queue. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor, and I wanna offer my appreciation to this amendment sponsor and the next amendment sponsor and I'm gonna be in the weird position of opposing both of them. Um, on this particular amendment, when we heard in committee, I think there was a lot of frustration from folks and I, and I get it and kind of share that frustration about thinking that we're taking funding away from what's a vacant, unfilled position. And that's totally fair, I, I get the logic. When we talked with departments in committee about this, um, they talked about what their their uh, recruitment pipelines are, what their turnover rate was, all that kind of thing. Again, we're stuck in the position of having to decide what we believe, quite frankly, like who we believe within that, and what we believe is gonna happen if we take this funding away. And what we get got told by the departments today was that very specific programs and very specific operating uh, items were going to be either taken away or not implemented. And a couple of those items were particularly disturbing to me, one of which in one of which specifically was the full operations of community centers on Saturday. And I brought this up in committee. You know, it was just a few, this body, we got community centers back open on Saturdays. Like they are open 10 to two, um, which is incredibly important. Um, like Beasley Community Center in Edge Hill in the district I represent. There's the ability to expand those operating hours and when the department looks us in the eye and puts it on paper and says, if you cut this money, we're not gonna, we're not gonna expand hours on Saturday, I gotta make a decision. And the decision I have to make is knowing that that's probably the coolest, best place for kids who live literally across the street to go to this summer and summers to come. And I gotta just, choose whether I believe the department or not. And in this case, I believe that the department will not expand those hours. Um, I'm also concerned about the NDOT piece. We on 12th Avenue South, and the, I represent one portion of it, Council Member Cash represents the other. We got hammered over the last couple of months about additional trash pickup and litter pickup over there. And we were able to get that service, and I'm very thankful of solid waste. But if we get that cut, that's immediate impact on the districts that we represent. I won't speak for Council Member Cash, but, but those are tangible things, very right? tangible things that this body has to decide if we believe that those departments are gonna do that. And unfortunately, I can't, play, I can't play chicken with those items because they're too important to the people in the district I represent. And so unfortunately, I'm gonna have to vote no on this amendment. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Porterfield. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just have a procedural question. Um, it, what, what happens if both 16 and 17 pass? Ms. Tarby. 
Um, if 16 and 17 pass, that would be an additional one and a half percent COLA added to uh, the pay plans. So added to the budget. If they're competing funds, then what happens, Director Darby? I don't think that they're competing funds. It's just that it would take um, all of those funds away from those departments. So um, both, uh, both, I, both amendments um, seek to reduce the funding of parks and recreation. One is by 1.8 million and the other is 1.5 million. So that would be 3.3 million. Let's, did I do it right? I did the math right. So. <laughs> Got thumbs up on I that. would double check that math if I'm reading. <laughs> um, and uh, the same with um, NDOT, it would be uh, essentially a, kind of a double hit for NDOT at 2.6, 2. Thank you, thank you, Director. So we're gonna have to make a decision between 16 and 17. Can we, is there a way that we could take them both together or discuss them both together so that people, people are gonna have to understand that they're gonna have to choose one or the other. We're not gonna be able to do both. So can we, that's not. Councilman Roden. Do one at a time. She's debating on the amendments, on both the amendments. We're on one amendment. There's actually another third option. It's called the chair's budget. So uh, I just want to make sure we were clear on that. I got it. Thank you, Council Member. And I wasn't debating, Vice Mayor. I'm asking, I'm asking for clarity. Uh, it, it, procedurally, I understand. But um, yeah, we're on amendment number 16 right now, obviously. Can you answer my question? Oh, I'm asking. I'm asking for clarity. Take Can we discuss both? That's the question that I asked you. The answer is no. That's fine. I'm just want to answer to the take question. One, take one amendment at a time. Thank you. All right, um, Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. My argument is the, is the same for this one and the next one. Uh, the intent of this legislation is to look at unfilled positions. Um, I know in doing my own research, I looked at the budget accountability reports uh, for April uh, for the various departments, uh, several of which had millions of dollars under budget because of uh, unfilled uh, positions. Uh, what we did here in committee is that, from a couple of departments, is that they would rather hold on to unfilled positions, non-existent people, uh, and cut services, uh, which is not the intent of the legislation. It's unfortunate that that would be the route that those departments would take. Um, one of my colleagues mentioned that we really need to look at uh, right-sizing departments and looking at these unfilled positions. I'll be back next term. So I know I will be um, looking at these unfilled positions and I don't think that it's uh, proper that we have you know, millions of dollars due to unfilled positions and that money just goes into fund balance. And once it goes into fund balance, then it's subject to our fund balance policy, which only allows for one-time expenses when and if there's a, there's a surplus. And I just really feel like it's better to, cap, to capture those funds before they get into fund balance and use that as recurring revenue to pay the people who are working now to keep the city going. Um, I doubt, um, I know NDOT had about 60 positions, Parks had about 120. Maybe they will fill all those positions. I doubt it because we have this conversation every year during budget season about unfilled positions. Um, but I would ask my colleagues to support this because I think it is a better use of funds and, and we can make it our, uh, we can express our intent that the monies from unfilled positions be used, not cutting services. Because if, if your status quo is a certain level of service, reducing non-existent, the number of non-existent people shouldn't result in a reduction of service. Uh, I, I think that's disingenuous on the part of the departments and I was really disappointed to hear that and I'm still gonna support this amendment. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Gamble, you recognize. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, as has been stated earlier, uh, our chair, uh, budget chair, Council Member Roden, took a lot of time and effort to try to bring up the cost of living adjustment, the COLA, to be more in line with the current uh, inflation. And he was able to do that, increase it by 2% without cutting services. As we have heard from our departments doing committee, uh, there, there, 
it, cutting the departments would mean cutting services. And we have strived through this entire term to increase services to a level that's um, representative or indicative of our uh, growing city and growing population. We're not there yet. We still need more positions. It has been stated by the departments that they have made adjustments to the uh, pay, entry pay, and, and other things to those vacant positions in order to attract more qualified people and better have better retention in those positions. Um, and, I, and I trust that they are doing that work and working to do that. So for those reasons, in addition to over the past week, I've spoken with several community groups, a, a chamber, uh, and also the Firefighters Association, and they, uh, the consensus is, is that Rising, raising the cola without cutting services and cutting positions it was the consensus that I heard. And for those reasons, I am not supportive of this amendment that would basically cut um, services and quality of life services at that for our community. But, well, but we also are increasing the cola to address the needs of getting our uh, Metro employees, which who we appreciate and value very much, uh, closer to uh, the current um, inflation rate and, and recommend to COLA. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Roden. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I just wanted everyone to know where I was coming from on the six percent COLA. It's it's fairly clear that most of you in this room gave me a wish list item, and most of them had a 6% um, COLA. Um, I went back, I had budget, uh, and she can verify this if y'all like to ask her. I asked her to go back over the past year, from July 1 last year to June 30th of this year, what we're looking like, and the average of inflation over the past year, including this month, is 6%. Um, another item that y'all fail to mention quite a bit is that not only is there a 6% COLA, there's a 3% merit increase. We are giving a 9% pay increase. No company that I know right now gives a 9% pay increase. The only reason I agreed to do it is because all of you said that you were gonna go even more if I didn't give the 6%. Now we're looking at some going seven, some are wanting to go 10. Folks, this is a 9% pay increase. I don't understand how we're just continue to spend money and start rating departments for a 9% pay increase. And I would oppose any change to the 6% COLA. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Young. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, when it comes to cutting departments, cutting funds from them, a lot of times they, whether it's the administration or the department heads or whoever, love to use some great scare tactics and pick some really good things that we really love that sound like really bad to cut, like community centers on Saturdays. So you're telling me if we cut money from parks, they're going to keep all the golf courses open out in West Nashville and East Nashville, but they're going to close community centers on Saturdays. If that's what they're going to do, then maybe the parks board and parks leadership need to kind of read, assess what their priorities are. My priority is the Metro employees and making sure we're paying people what we need to be paying them because right now we ain't doing it. And even doing this, we're still not gonna be there. But if we gotta close some golf courses a little bit, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on golf courses, that's just an example that comes to mind. But y'all, like some of y'all have said, we, we can't let these scare tactics bully us around. We're the council, we're the body that appropriates this money. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I rise in support of this amendment and any amendment that increase the COLA. Uh, we're very easy to talk about how we, we pay our teachers the most money and all of that, but we're not noticing or we're not paying attention to the fact that inflation eats its up. By the time people pay for their insurance, pay for everything they need to do, that money comes to nothing. And we keep asking people to do more and to continue to do more. When it comes to unfilled position, like Councilmember uh, Toom said, these are unfilled positions. The department have been doing their services without cutting down with what they have. We're not asking them to let go of staff. Actually, this COLA is for their staff. 
so it's for major employees and their people benefits from it from, from me too so I, I think that we need to listen when people say look we all know what it's like I don't know about all of you but I know and my kids and everybody know that things are very expensive here in Nashville and no matter what you mix you still you're still struggling and so just trying to go back to what the civil commission said uh, or to increase it to get it to that point. I, I thank council member, uh, the, the budget chair and the vice chair, they did a great job, but trying to increase money for people is not uh, a slight on them. Does not say they did not clear, but we're trying to do the best that we can for people. And if we can make this happen, I'm going to recommend that we do. These are the people that we represent and we need to make people all as best as we can. People are living in Nashville. People are trying to live in Nashville. People are driving very far because of the cost of living continue to go up. So we need to increase it as best as we can. So I support all the amendment that takes it up to wherever it takes it up to. The more we can give the people, the better. Thank you. All right. Uh, Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I, um, I, I'm bringing to the table a different concern that we haven't really talked about here because I've started to hear from uh, both teachers and support staff. And last year, I was really proud to be a part of a council that increased uh, pay scales for some of the lowest paid employees in Metro. I think if we continue to advance down this road, I know we're trying to pay Metro employees more, but we are leaving other folks behind. And I think as we go forward from this moment, uh, we need to make sure that as we are starting to um, adjust pay on the fly and help people that we are continuing to keep uh, teachers and support staff in mind as we go forward. And this won't do anything for them if we advance this and neither will the other amendment. I'm concerned about that. Uh, we don't have a way to do that in this budget uh, with the current amendments that are on the table. And I wanna make sure uh, that we don't increase gaps and we aren't pitting workers against one another. And I'm concerned that these amendments uh, that go further than what's in the substitute actually start to do that even more. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Bircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I was going to add, for those of us that remember, we had some grueling um, budget years. And um, just the challenge of, and I don't want to speak for the departments, but being a former chair, I know what they're I know what they're saying. They're saying they want to maintain their capacity to be able to scale up. The population, the demand for services is not declining, it's increasing. And many of us know it is very, very, very hard once we remove the positions out of the budget to get them back in the budget. It took uh, almost our, our first term to get codes somewhat up to par. And that was the doing of the two, two administrations before us. So back when we were doing the recession, prior administrations, just give some background, Prior administrations required departments to cut across the board. When this body, when we had those grueling budget years, we agreed that we weren't gonna do that. We we're gonna keep our departments whole, we we're gonna keep services running on time, and, and that's what we did. When finances got a little bit better, we were incrementally working with the departments to staff them up, to give them the positions to be able to staff them up. The budget vote, although we vote on it tonight, the budget vote has impact for years, for decades. And to undo that, it takes even more time to, to undo the harm that's already been caused budget process, when the, 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 the sheets go out for your wish list, that's not just an arbitrary ac exercise. That's, that's the feedback that you're providing back to the budget chair so that we can work as a body so that the chair can come up with a best, the best substitute that he or she can 
from the feedback from this entire body and the citizens of Nashville. So I'm, I'm just gonna do my shameless plug here. Um, Chair Roten, Vice Chair Gamble has done a phenomenal job uh, with this substitute. I would have loved to have to been in the position, probably Chair Mendez too, um, <laughs> to yep. be in this position where we're actually even having this conversation. Councilmember so, Roach. Thank you, thank you, Vice Mayor. You Support go. the chair's budget. All right. Uh, Councilmember Bradford. Previous question. You're the last one in the queue. <clears throat> All right, uh, uh, Councilmember Bradford has called for the previous question. Uh, all in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevailed. We are on amendment number 16. This is by Councilmember Johnston. Um, it was properly moved, properly seconded. Uh, we will be voting on amendment number 16. All right, we'll be on the board. Mr. Clark, let me know if you're ready. Good to go. Mr. Clark, open up the machines. Okay, Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. Ayes 13, no's 24, zero abstentions, um, the amendment fails. Okay. Uh, we are on amendment number 17 by Council Member Porterfield, Toombs, Taylor, and Sawara. Council Member Porterfield, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Member Roten. Uh, budget and finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance uh, voted against this amendment, two in favor, eight against, uh, two abstentions. All right, thank you. Councilor Porterfield. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, we just heard from a lot of our colleagues. There were some great points made. A couple of things I just really want to reiterate. Um, this is giving a 1% COLA to our Metro employees. It is making some cuts from unfilled positions across various departments. Uh, I think Councilmember uh, Young summed it up in a very eloquent way. Right now, what we have is departments are making a choice and the choice that they are making is that they would rather cut services than pay Metro employees. And while I appreciate, and I wanna take a moment to acknowledge administration, thank you administration for getting us to the 4% COLA. Thank you to Chair Roten and Chair Gamble. I think y'all did a phenomenal job with getting us to the 6% COLA. The recommendation was 7% and we have a pathway to get our employees to 7%. Multiple departments are currently understaffed. When you are understaffed, that means people have to pick up the slack, pay them for it. If our employees are doing more work because there are vacancies, pay them for it. We have a pathway to get there. We are prioritizing vacant positions that are not being held over the men and women and individuals that are servicing our community every day. This does not cut services. Nobody's in these positions currently. It does not cut services. You cannot, it does not reduce the level of service that your community is getting when this is a vacant position. If a department head chooses to cut services, that's telling of the department head. We have the ability to pay our Metro employees. The director of NDOT said that the new, play, the new pay plan was helping with uh, recruitment and retention. Well, guess what? We want to recruit and retain our Metro employees, then we need to plan. them. There was an inclusivity report that said employees in all three category salaries that's under 50,000, making between $50,000 to $99,999 uh, $99, and over $100,000. 
for those employees living in Davidson County, that number is declining in every single category. People cannot afford to live here. We have the opportunity to make this right. In one of the budget work sessions, we were able to look at the, uh, the, the cost of living adjustments and compare that to inflation, and finance told us that we were on par for the last 10 years. That data did not include the years that we did not give Metro employees their COLA. And Council Member Virtual just made an excellent point. Budgets have ramifications that take decades to fix. We didn't pay people money uh, in, in those years. They are still feeling that. You can't say that we gave people good money 10 years ago. They don't feel that today. But today, we have the opportunity to pay the people that service in our, committee, uh, our community. So I'm asking you all to please support this amendment to give our Metro employees that are also our constituents this additional 1%. Thank you. Right, thank you. Council Member Sepulveda. Well, I, I can't say it better than my colleague. Uh, I just wanted to point out one thing that we haven't mentioned. Um, in previous years, and I was uh, talking with Council Member Mendez, and um, I think the Barry administration was the last time we did this. Um, we had three-year pay plans that had COLA increases, and I know that stopped because we couldn't afford it. We are in a different place and we shouldn't continue to have this conversation. We should plan ahead for our employees. And so I would challenge us to think ahead uh, for this next budget that will be coming up and some of us will still be on here. Uh, we shouldn't play around with people's livelihood and that's essentially what we're doing. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Young. Previous question. Okay. Councilmember Young has called the previous question. We're not voting on the amendment. Previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed no. no. Previous question prevails. Uh, we're on the board. Uh, we are voting on amendment number 18 uh, by Councilmember Porter, Phil Toombs, Taylor, and Sawara. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I just turned the page. Okay. We're voting on amendment number 17. Sorry. Uh, by the same sponsors. Um, we are voting on amendment number 17. Ready? All right, uh, Mr. Clark, uh, open up the machines. Again, if you're for amendment number 17, you'd vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. In. Mr. Clark, uh, close machines, take the vote. Uh, ayes 12, noes 25, one abstention, uh, the amendment fails. All right, we are now on amendment number 18. Uh, this is an amendment uh, sponsored by Councilmember Porterfield, Toombs, Taylor, and Sawara. Councilmember Porterfield, you recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilmember Roten, uh, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance. Uh, we were a draw on this one. Four in favor, four against, with one abstention. Okay. All right, Councilor Ann Porterfield, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I would like to move the amendment with the comment. All right, Councilor Ann Porterfield is moving amendment number 18 properly. Seconded back to you. Thank you. This is to give one and a half positions to HR to address retention by doing exit interviews and recruitment, trying to get people to apply and be successful when they apply in Metro. It's also given two and a half positions in finance. One is a DEI policy position to look at policy through an equity lens, looking at equity in legislation, laws, programs, policies, and practices in Metro government and boards and commissions, and one position for equitable community development, which will look at how we address the racial wealth gap and the displacement of historically underserved com communities, including vulnerable immigrant and 65 and up communities. The two departments will also share a, tra a trainer. So this is, these are both for uh, DEI positions between the two uh, departments. 
Um, one of the takeaways in the inclusivics report um, stated that analysis of attrition and promotion may provide important insights. It is not possible to analyze employee turnover or promotion from the current available open data sets. Analysis of employees who leave, whether voluntary or involuntary, may show patterns about certain demographic groups who have different trajectories, employment tenure, and or experiences. Data showing employee changes via movement along pay scales and or titles and promotions are also important to capture and determine why some groups tend to do better than others. So breaking that down, the inclusivics report showed us that departments with missions to provide social welfare services and to serve traditionally marginalized or minority communities are among those that are staffed with higher percentages of non-white employees and departments whose missions focus on social welfare services courts and public facilities are amongst the lowest paid. 15 out of 50 or 30% of our departments have salaries that are below average and offer categories of median average lowest and highest paid um, and 58% of them have that in uh, three of those four categories. Uh, we have a lot to, of work that needs to be done with regards to diversity, equity, and inclusion in Metro. Uh, this would take uh, a small amount of money from the 4% fund, still keeping it above 4% so that we can fund these very important DEI positions so that we can look at equity in our city uh, for marginalized communities and I ask my colleagues to support it. All right, thank you, Councilmember Porterfield. Uh, Councilmember Sawara, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I also rise in support of this amendment and I wanted to point out that the DEI work that this funds is very important. Uh, I'm looking at the comments about the 4% and uh, the request is 210 million and we got 54 million. So this 500,000 is not the reason why we're not meeting the demands of the department. It's just, anyway, just wanted to point that out. So I hope that uh, that small amount, at least all the other amendment has been disapproved. So this 500,000 should not be a deterrent. And the fact that the budget and the administration don't I'm neutral about it. I hope that says that it's something that they don't mind us doing. So I hope you all will vote in support. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Campbell. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I think that was from the last, uh, I didn't have a comment on this one, okay. although I, I do support uh, this amendment. All right, Council, Thank Member, you. Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I rise in support of this amendment. I really do appreciate Council Lady Porterfield's Tombs, Taylor Suara, bringing it. Um, I think those of us who have served as uh, chairs of committees regarding certain departments who have tried to look at some of the kind of right sizing that we're talking about, um, looking at areas that have been problematic um, from an employment perspective, um, really the conditions in which our employees work. We have employees, colleagues that feel uh, bullied, passed over. Um, they don't feel like their departments are particularly well managed. They don't feel like they can tell their leadership. They don't feel like they can tell the HR person who manages that department that we don't have exit interviews is highly problematic. Um, we have folks come to us, we maintain their confidence, we try to speak to the administration and make things better for our employees, and um, it's like hitting a wall. It's very, very frustrating. And so we look at some of these departments that have all these unstaffed positions, that's often a culture issue, colleagues. Um, and so we need to do more in HR, um, in uh, the, the culture in our departments. I think that will help us uh, as well when we get these uh, salaries set correctly that we've been talking about for years. Um, but uh, this is really on point um, for some of the budget conversations we're having. And I think for my experience as a committee chair over the years, um, engaging with our employees, trying to do right by them and support them and give them a better work environment. So I commend my colleagues and I ask us all to support this. Thank you. All right, thank you. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Ms. President. I, I'm Pretty sure if I recall these were actually on wish lists, I'd just be um, interested to know from the sponsor or others who worked on these if these were requested by the departments in question. Councilor Porterfield. They were. Councilor O'Connell, anything else? Uh, Councilmember Sepulveda. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm going to be in support of um, uh, this amendment um, for several reasons that I have stated before. Um, we do have a lot of problems in our Metro departments. Training is needed. Uh, we saw what happened um, with the Arts Commission. We saw what happened um, at the Health Department. I had uh, just a more recent experience with a Spanish-speaking family that was trying to get through um, coordinated entry and uh, insensitive comments were made and now that all of social services is getting retrained. Um, yeah, we, we, we do have problems. People don't feel heard. Uh, our employees don't feel like they could go to HR and some that have gone to HR have been retaliated against. So I'm gonna be in support of this amendment tonight and I ask for your support. All right, thank you. Um, Councilmember Sepulveda was the last one in the queue. Uh, we are Oh, Councilmember Vercher, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Are, th are these amounts, is that including salary and fringe or? And also, um, where are we at on uh, the 4%? Uh, if the if reduction, uh, Director Flannery, the, if I'm, the Flannery. I'm with you, I've been tracking it as we go. If I'm doing math right, if we move this one forward, we'll be at 4.42%. Um, in the four percent, and on those salaries, that that two eighty is that everything for the position? You know, uh, we've been confused by this math for a while. It's one and a half positions for two eighty in uh, HR or two. That's, two that's and what and I'm half. asking. So the, I think the question was that, them that differently. it was conferred with the department. Yeah, so I, I guess because it's just providing funding to the departments, and not actually positions. They they can make it be whatever it needs to be. I mean. It, if it's 220 and it only gets us two positions in finance because they're not including fringe, then we'll take whatever it is and put that money to work. But I'm, I, I don't know how they got to this math. Okay. Um, we, we've kind of experienced this before where we pass these amendments with no really uh, um, clear guidance from this body to the department. Um, as it relates to how the money will actually be um, be utilized, so departments have the discretion to to use it in the manner of of their choice. So, will you create another position specifically for DEI, or will this money uh, go up under another salary or multiple salaries so that current staff could do DEI work? So you will see that same issue in, in the next three amendments. It's the same concept where it's just providing funding to departments, but they, well, the intent of this council might be one thing. It is not what is in these, in yeah, these things. So. Yeah, we've been burned on that before. Yeah. Um, so. I could tell you that my intent might be to create DEI positions, but I don't know that I will work here in September. Right. So I can't make that call for the finance department. I definitely can't do it for human human resources. Thank you so much, uh, Director Flannery. And I guess Director Hall isn't here this late, is she? Probably not. Okay. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Council Member. All right. Uh, Council Member Virtue is the last person in the queue. Ready to vote. Um, we are on amendment number 18 by Council Member Porterfield, Toombs, Taylor, and Sawara. Uh, properly moved, properly seconded. Um, Mr. Clark uh, will be on the board. If you're for the amendment, you would vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. Amendment number 18. Ready to go? All right, Mr. Clark, open up the machines. Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. 
Ayes 21, noes 15, zero abstentions. Uh, amendment passes. So amendment number 18 is on the bill. Okay, we're on amendment number 19 uh, by Councilmember Stiles and Toombs. Uh, Councilmember Stiles, uh, you are recognized. Thank you very much, Vice Mayor. Committee reports? Uh, Councilmember Roten. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance uh, did not approve this amendment. Three in favor, seven against. All right, Councilmember Stiles, you're recognized. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, this allocation for the, it's an additional 25,000 on top of the 5.5 million that they had. In speaking with Director Kroom of Metro Action Commission, she made me aware there were some expenses that came up this year with the position we created that the Women's Caucus created last year in last year's budget. And she asked for 25,000. And yes, I am touching the 4% fund, but it is for $25,000 and my following amendment is only 40, so this is not going to put a real dent into things. Um, however, this position that's been created is specifically for center-based care and home-based daycare workers uh, to be able to have some therapy um, for the work that they are doing. And it's crucial work and the first person who has been hired has done a really good job but needs some more assistance in this year's budget. All I'd right. like to vote for approval. All right, you've heard the explanation from uh, Council Member Stiles. Any discussion on the amendment? Nobody in the queue. Council Member Gamble, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just a question uh, for administration or anyone that can answer to uh, Metro Action Commission uh, request for this additional funding for this business, oh, for this uh, position rather. Uh, can you, can someone from the administration speaks to the Metro Action Commission budget and if there is some other uh, path for them to get the money uh, out of the uh, recommended budget allocation uh, to the Metro Action Commission? Mr. Jamison. Thank you, Council Lady. Yes, we understand Metro Action Commission has an available fund balance that could address this need if desired. Thank you. Councilor Stiles. Thank you, Vice Mayor. And, and so I, I did verify this request prior to today's meeting with Metro Action Commission and the request still is for this additional 25,000. It was not in the original budget request that they made. If it if it wasn't, I, I wouldn't be trying to do an amendment right now. This position does need this assistance and it, it will hamper them in this upcoming year if we don't give them this small amount. All right, any other discussion on this? Um, we will uh, need to go on the board. Uh, Mr. Clark, oh, Councilman Vercher, you're recognized. I just want to make sure I'm hearing clearly. They do have twenty-five thousand in fund balance to cover to cover the th this need. Uh, Ms. Flannery is grabbing the microphone. They have five point five million dollars. Oh, in fund okay. Balance. Thank you, Director Flannery. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Um, okay, uh, Mr. Clark. We are voting on Amendment Number Nineteen. Okay, by Council Member Stiles. Ready to go. Uh, Mr. Clark, open up the machines. Councilmember need to vote. Then you don't have to just hit something. <laughs> Eight, no, it's 26, one abstention. Um, the amendment, amendment number 19 fails. Okay. Uh, 
We are on amendment number 20 uh, by Councilmember Stiles and Evans and Murphy. Uh, Councilmember Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you again, Vice Mayor. So this is for a second vet tech. There is one vet and one vet tech included in uh, the budget chair's substitute. However, for vets to be able to do their procedures, they do need two techs. So there is a space constraint. There's money that is in the budget that is available for MAC to look for a new location and a new building. And speaking with Director Harrington, she said that they can accommodate a vet and two techs. And I did verify with her again before this meeting if that was what she wanted and she did say yes. So uh, again, it's, it's a small amount. I understand it's from the 4% fund, but we get so many complaints from constituents about animals roaming at large, uh, biting people. It, this and also the spay neuter conversation has been on, put on hold because we can't seem to get anything done. So this would be a step forward making constituents feel better about what's going on at MAC. All right, I need a committee report Sorry from about that. Councilman report. Roden. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, this one is amendment number 20, uh, budget and finance uh, did not approve this amendment, four in favor, six against. All right, All right. Uh, Councilmember Stiles has moved amendment number 20, properly seconded. Uh, Councilmember Bradford, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So as everybody knows, for the last four years, I've been fighting to increase funding and resources for MAC. It's one of the mo one of the many underserved and understaffed and under-resourced uh, departments in the city that has one of the bigger impacts. One thing I wanted to add to this, in, in, in some of the committee meetings, it was discussed how often we see MAC on the news or on social media saying they're full, they can't take any more animals. And the first thing they do when that happens is they start offering free adoption. They waive adoption fees. That's lost revenue. So by take by approving this $40,000 so that we can get the additional vet tech so that they have two veterinarians and the support staff, then they can begin having more regular and routine spay and neuter clinics, thereby helping reduce the number of unwanted animals in this city and main, being able so that they, they can operate fully staffed with all the help that they can need and not have to start waiving fees and costing us money. So I ask my colleagues to support this small investment in the bigger picture and support MAC. Thank you. All right, thank you, council member. Uh, we are, um, I think, ready to vote. Nobody else is in the queue. We are on amendment number 20 by council member Stiles and Evans and Murphy. Uh, Mr. Clark. Ready to vote. We are voting on amendment number 20. Councilmember Stiles has moved amendment number 20. Uh, if you're for it, you'd vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. Mr. Clark, open up those chains. Okay, votes are in, Mr. Clark, close machine, take the vote. Ayes 19, no 17s, uh, the amendment passes, okay. We're on amendment number uh, 21 by Council Member Stiles. Councilmember Stiles, you're recognized on amendment number 21. Yes, Vice Mayor, I, I have uh, committee reports, but I did withdraw it. Okay, yeah. Councilmember Roten. Uh, budget and finance, amendment 21 was withdrawn. Okay. Same yeah. for amendment 22. Councilmember Stiles, are you withdrawing? A sure will. Councilmember Stiles? I am sorry. All right, what are you gonna do with amendment number 21? A, a 21 is withdrawn okay. and, and, and also and then 22? Yes, please, okay. also withdrawn. Okay, thank you, okay. 22 is withdrawn. We are now on um, amendment number 23 by Councilmember Henderson. Councilmember Henderson, you're recognized. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, withdrawing with a brief comment, I would invite my colleagues to look at the budget and finance discussion about this ongoing 40 year zombie amendment that Dell does not even use anymore. And um, I would invite the next mayor to give a look to this and see about addressing this in our budget. And with that, I will withdraw, please. Okay, uh, amendment, num amendment number 23 is withdrawn. Uh, we have um, four late filed amendments. Mm -hmm. Uh, four late filed amendments on BL 2023-1867. Um, Council Member Hurt, you've got the first one. Uh, you're recognized. Thank you. <laughs> so I, uh, to again, believe that our city is arts. All right, so I'm sorry, you committee reports. You got to get a committee report, and I think you have to suspend. I'm the sorry, I'm sorry. File. All right, so uh, let's go to the committee report first. Okay. Councilmember Roten, you're recognized. Um, committee report was uh, four, three, three. Four, three, and three. Okay, all right. Um, so, um, Councilmember Hurt, uh, because it's late filed, you would have had to go to rules. Yes, I'd Council like to. Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized. Um, on these, we, on all the late files, I'll just go ahead and say that we, we said okay because we know of the short timeline, but that doesn't mean that others may not have objections on it. All right, so Councilmember Hurt, you're gonna have to um, move to suspend the rules. So I move to suspend the rules. All right, so Councilmember Hurt is moving to suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? Okay, there's two objections. Uh, so uh, rules were not suspended, you can't hear your amendment. All right, uh, we're on the second amendment, which is uh, by Councilmember Porterfield and Suara. Uh, Councilmember Porterfield, um, uh, you're recognized on a late filed amendment. I'm withdrawing, Vice Mayor. Okay, uh, Councilmember Porterfield withdraws. Uh, Councilmember Welsh, uh, late filed amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, it's withdrawn. Okay, okay. Councilmember Withers, you got the last one. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, withdraw this one. Okay, all right. Okay. That it? Okay, so um, that is it. Let's go back through this. Council Member um, Roten, Mr. Chairman, uh, let's make sure that we've yes, got- Mr. Vice Mayor. Let's make sure we've got the, um, the amendments on. You're on uh, your substitute resolution, and I've got that we have adopted amendment number two. Amendment number three, yeah. amendment, number, amendment number four, number 18, and number 20. Is that it? Is that what you've got? That's what I okay. have. So uh, Councilman Roten is on his substitute um, budget resolution uh, with, uh, pr with amendment number two, three, four, 18, and 20 on it. Council Member Roten, you recognized on your substitute. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I'd like to renew my motion on the substitute as amended with a brief comment. All right, so Councilmember Roten is moving uh, BL 2023 1867 as substituted as amended uh, for passage on third and final reading. This is the operations budget uh, seconded by Councilmember Gamble. Back to you, Councilmember Roden. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that worked on this. We've been working on this for two months. My vice chair, um, I couldn't ask for a better vice chair. Um, she knows, and if y'all don't know, you do now, because she was with me every step of the way when I had back surgery last fall, and when I was out a few weeks ago, she took over every committee. She was in every meeting that I was in, and so if I would have fallen out on the floor here, she would have known everything that was going on with this budget, and so, which is very likely with my luck lately, so, uh, but I do appreciate um, Vice Chair Gamble, she has been wonderful. All the former chairs have been wonderful to me. They have helped me whenever I ask questions. Uh, Council Member Toombs, Council Member Allen, Council Member Mendez, every time I asked for something, they were wonderful. Um, Y'all had a lot of wish list items and we had to narrow those down a whole lot. And uh, we've come down, we've had the 2% COLA, the Arts Commission, I just wrote some of them down. Additional money for uh, NASA, we had the Better Bis, uh, Bus Program, Metro Action Commission, Neighbor to Neighbor, Safe Bar Program. Um, there's a lot of things. We put uh, 175 million new dollars into schools. 
which is a which is a lot. And I know we've had some some folks uh, talking about money for schools. They have money in their budget. Believe me, if they want to give a raise to their to their teachers or additional money to anyone, they have the money to do it. So I don't want anyone to think that they don't have the money to do that. They do. They're elected officials, just like we are, and they can make. So you need to recognize that. They're elected just like we are, and they can make decisions on how they fund Metro schools. That's what they're there for. Um, I wanted to thank the entire budget committee because a lot of folks showed up every single day to work on these wish list items. And um, I think we did the best job we could. Uh, we didn't, I don't think we kind of rated the departments like initially was I thought was gonna be a problem. And um, everyone did a good job and I really appreciate it. So with that, I renew my motion to approve the substitute. All right, so council member uh, Broughton has uh, moved uh, approval of, again, a bill 2023-1867 as substituted as amended. Can uh, council member Gamble's seconds? Discussion on the bill. All right, we are ready to vote, Mr. Clark. We're on the machines. Oh, council member Cash, you're recognized. Sorry, I, uh, I I just want to understand something. Like I know um, amendment number one was kind of uh, put in reserve until uh, we see what happened with the with the substitute budget. I just want to understand if the change to the, um, the reserve, the balance, the fund balance reserve policy, is something that's happening for this budget only, or is it something that is is now going to be that if this is passed, it becomes codified in law. Council member, uh, Roden. I'll defer to our legal counsel, but it's my understanding it will, be, it will be that way going forward for the year. No, it's just for this one year. I apologize. I thought it was for the years to come. So Councilman Mendez, it was his Monday. It's in the actual substitute, his amendment that we did not take up. So please explain it because I thought it was going to be going forward. I'm going to go to Director Darby and then Council Member Mendez. The amendment to the fund balance policy is for this particular budget. Um, I believe that the Council Member Mendez will probably come back with a more formal amendment to the actual policy that will be uh, uh, considered by the Council and will be long term. Council Member Mendez. Um, Totally agree that it's for this year only, um, but I'm not coming back with an amendment. Um, I think I'm gonna leave that to about 20 y'all who are coming back and a new mayor. And uh, um, <laughs> thank you. Um, it's clear the policy needs change, um, but I think it, the dust needs to settle. Um, and it doesn't need to change a lot, but it needs to change. And I think it ought to happen next term. Um, so we changed the language. It's uh, Councilman wrote and put it in the substitute. Um, and uh, it's just for this year only. Okay. Council Member Cash. Thank you. Uh, that's really what I wanted to know. And just to remind folks, um, listening that it's about uh, whether or not the fund reserve monies can be used for capital, one-time capital expenses, or the change would be to one-time expenses that, that go beyond capital. Um, and I got the answer that I wanted to, and, and we'll pack that away for later. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Um, we, are, um, we are on the board. All right. Um, Mr. Clark? We are voting on the budget. Uh, it's a motion to pass the bill on third reading as substituted as amended. Uh, again, Council Member Roten um, moved the bill and Council Member Gamble seconded it. Uh, if you're for the budget, you were gonna vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. Mr. Clark, open the machines. I almost didn't know. That would be funny if it would have been 38 to 1. <laughs> Council Member Young, you're holding up the entire city budget. He's in. All right. Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. Ayes 38, no zero, no suspension. City budget passes. Thank you. 
Point of order. Point of order. I was booed by Brandon Taylor. I don't appreciate that at all. Uh, well, you can talk to the mayor about that. All right. And, um, all right. So um, uh, don't stand up yet for Council Member Rowe, and we haven't packed, passed the tax levy or the pay plan, so let's get those done. All right. So we are now on item number 91, BL 2023-1868. Uh, that's an ordinance establishing the tax levy in the General Services District for the fiscal year 2023-2024, declaring the amount required for the annual operating budget of the Urban Services District, pursuant to Section 6.07 of the Metropolitan Charter. Council Member Roten, you are recognized on the tax Tax levy bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move approval, approval and uh, budget and finance. We approve 15 in favor, zero against. Okay, so that's the committee report. Councilmember Roten is moving approval of BL 2023 1868. Councilmember Gamble is uh, uh, will second it. Uh, discussions on uh, BL 2023 1868. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. On the board. Okay, we're on the board, uh, Mr. Clark. This is the motion to pass the bill on third reading. Uh, if you're in favor, you'd vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. Mr. Clerk, open up the machines. Everybody in? Mr. Clark, close the machines, take the vote. Ayes 36, no zero, no abstentions. All right, uh, bill passes on third reading. We are on uh, item number 92, bill 2023-1873 by Council Member Roten. It's an ordinance creating a host of different positions. I'll leave it at that. Mr. Um, Chairman Roten, you're recognized. Um, a point of personal personal privilege. I didn't remember to thank some folks earlier that I should have thanked, and uh, she's trying to get she's over there with her head down. Uh, Director Flannery, uh, you deserve a lot of thanks, you and your department, for all the meetings that we had. And I just want everybody to know that Mike Jamison helped a lot with setting up all these meetings, and our director, Miss Darby. Uh, every meeting that I was in, she was sitting right beside me. So if y'all would all give them a round of applause because they did a lot of work. So thank you. <laughs> Move approval. Uh, we had, uh, there's three amendments uh, that we took up. All were 15 in favor, zero against, and the actual resolution was 15 in favor, zero against. Wait a minute, we're on. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're on item number 92, Bill 2023-1873. You're a little ahead. I apologize. Okay, that's okay. Uh, I need a committee report from you, and I've got one from Councilmember Benedict. One second. Uh, it's on page 35 of the agenda bill, 2023-1873, item number 92. Oh, I got it. Um, it was 15 in favor, zero against. All right. Uh, Council Member Benedict, you're recognized. Thank you. We voted seven in favor, zero against. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Council Member Roten, a motion to approve? Move approval. Okay. Got uh, Council Member Roten is approving. Um, moving to approve. Council Member Benedict will second. Uh, um, any discussion on BL 2023-1873? Um, we'll do this by voice vote. Budget ordinance. Okay. All right. All right. We'll do this by <coughs> voice vote. Uh, we are on BL 2023-1873 for passage. All those in favor of the bill for passage on third reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on third reading. Okay, we are on um, 
the fifth part of this, item number 10, all the way back to page 7. We are on RS 2023-2196 by Councilmember Roten, Benedict, and Porterfield. It's a resolution adopting a new pay plan for the general employees of the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County, excluding employees of the Board of Health, Board of Education, and Police and Fire Departments, effective July 1st, 2023. Councilmember Roten, uh, you're recognized on your bill. Uh, move approval. On your resolution. So, uh, Councilmember Roten is moving approval uh, budget committee report. Um, we had uh, on the resolution was 15 in favor, zero against. Uh, on the proposed amendment uh, by Roten was 15 in favor, zero against. Uh, on the proposed amendment by Johnston, it was three in favor, eight against, one abstention. And the amendment by Porterfield, two in favor, eight against, two abstentions. All right. Uh, you had, it was there a fourth amendment and then a late filed. I'm not showing that we voted on Council Member Welch's proposed amendment four. I apologize if we. Council Member Welch. They're all withdrawn. Withdrawn, okay. And Council Member Withers, his was withdrawn as well. Okay, all right. All right, so um, uh, Council Member Benedict, uh, committee report on RS 2023 and 2196. Uh, Thank you, Vice Mayor. <clears throat> we passed the resolution overall, six in favor, zero against. Okay. On amendment one, we were six in favor, zero against. On amendment two, three in favor, three against. On amendment three, uh, Porterfield's two in favor, four against. Interrupt now. Okay, all right. All right, thank you for the committee report. Councilor Roten, you're on RS 2023-2196. Renew my motion. All right, so you've got a motion uh, you're moving to approve. Council Add Member Benedict is seconding it, but you've got an amendment that you've got to get on this thing. Oh, okay. move the amendment. Okay, Council Member uh, Roden is moving amendment number one to RS 2023 2196, properly seconded explanation of the amendment. Uh, council explain that. Okay, uh, Director Darby. The amendment uh, changes the, the pay plan to uh, acknowledge the 2% increase um, that was just voted on in the budget to the 2% increase to the COLA. Renew my motion. Okay, so Councilman Roten is moving amendment number one to RS 2023-2196, properly seconded discussion on the amendment. Seeing none, we are voting on amendment number one. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The amendment's adopted. Uh, Council Member Johnson, you've got amendment number two. Withdraw. Okay, uh, and Council Member Porterfield, you've got amendment number three. Just... We're on RS 2023-2196. I'm so sorry, Vice Mayor. I okay. am a little lost because I stepped away. What amendment is this? Okay, so this is uh, the pay plan for the general employees. I'll withdraw. Okay. Um, and um, my understanding is Councilmember Welsh withdraws amendment number four, and Councilmember Withers withdrew the late filed amendment. So, Councilmember Roten, we are on RS 2023-2196. With your amendment on, um, you recognized. Renew my motion as amended. All right. So, Councilmember Roten is moving RS 2023-2196 as amended for passage. Uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, resolution is adopted. We are now on um, item number 11, RS 2023 2197, by Council Members Roten, Benedict, Syracuse, and Hurt. It's a resolution adopting a new pay plan for employees of the Metropolitan Departments of Police and Fire, effective July 1st, 2023. Council Member Roten, you're recognized on your resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move approval. Uh, committee report. Uh, 15 in favor, zero against, and my proposed amendment was 15 in favor, zero against. Councilmember Johnston's proposed amendment was three in favor, eight against, one abstention. Councilmember Porterfield's, two in favor, eight against, two abstentions, and both Councilmember Welsh and Councilmember Withers were withdrawn. Okay. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Benedict. Uh, government operations. Thanks, Vice Mayor. We passed six in favor, zero against overall. On amendment one by Roten, we passed six in favor, zero against. Amendment two by Johnston, three in favor, three against. Amendment three by Porterfield, two in favor, four against. And uh, the Welsh.
Walsh and Withers amendments were withdrawn. All right, thank you. And Council Member Syracuse, Public Health and Safety. Committee did not meet. Okay, did not meet. Okay, we've got committee reports in though. All right, uh, back to you, Council Member Roden. I'd move my amendment and um, it's the 2% like we discussed just a few minutes ago. All right, so Council Member Roden, uh, Roden is moving amendment number one to RS 2023-2197, properly seconded. Uh, he just explained it. Questions on the amendment? Seeing none, we are ready to vote. All those in favor of amendment number one on RS 2023-2197 say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, amendment number one is on. Uh, Council Member Johnston, amendment number two. Withdrawn. Council Member Porterfield, amendment number three. Withdraw. Withdrawn and amendment number four and the late filed amendment by Council Withers are both withdrawn. Council Member Roden. Uh, you're back on your resolution as amended. Renew my motion as amended. All right, so Councilman Roten is renewing his motion to pass RS 2023-2197 as amended. Again, properly seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The resolution as amended is adopted. And uh, item number 12, RS 2023-2198, by Council Members Roten, Benedict, Syracuse, and Hurt. That's a resolution adopting a new pay plan for employees of the Metropolitan Board of Health. Effective July 1st, 2023, Council Member Roten, you're recognized on your resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move approval and also move approval on the amendment. Both were 15 in favor, zero against. Council Member Johnson's amendment was three in favor, eight against, one abstention. Council Member Porter Fields was two in favor, eight against, two abstentions. Councilmember Welsh and Withers were withdrawn. Okay, uh, Government Operations, Councilmember Benedict. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Overall, we passed the six in favor, zero against. Um, the Roten Amendment, six in favor, zero against. The Johnston Amendment, three in favor, three against. The Porterfield Amendment, two in favor, four against, and Welsh and Withers amendments were withdrawn. All right, Public Health and Safety, Councilmember Syracuse. No report. No report, all right. Um, Councilman Roten, uh, we're back on your resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Renew my motion on the amendment for the 2%. Okay, so Councilman Roten is moving amendment number one on RS 2023-2198, properly seconded. He explained the amendment. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of amendment number one on RS 2023-2198 say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, Amendment, amendment number one is on RS 2023-2198. Uh, Council Member Johnston, amendment number two. Withdrawn. Okay, that's withdrawn. Uh, Council Member Porterfield, amendment number three. Withdrawn. Withdrawn. Council Member Roten, you are on your resolution as amended because amendment, amendment number four and the late filed amendment by Council Member Withers are withdrawn as well. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, renew my motion as amended. Okay, so Council Member Roten is moving RS 2023-2198 as amended, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all those in favor of RS 2023-2198 as amended for passage say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, resolution as amended passes and that completes every item that we had to take up for the budget. Congratulations, Council Member Roden. All right, we, um, we still have a calendar left. Let's see. Um, we have um, items on the consent agenda. Uh, let's make sure we've got these right. Thank you. All right, these are items on the consent agenda. Item number 13, R is 2023-2199 is on consent. 2245 is on consent. 2246 on consent. 2248 on consent. 2249 is on consent. 2250 is on consent. 2251 is on consent. 2252 is on consent. Twenty two sixty is on consent. Twenty two sixty one. Twenty two sixty one is on consent. Twenty two sixty two is on consent. Twenty two sixty three is on consent. Twenty two sixty four on consent. Twenty two sixty five is on consent. 
2272 is on consent and 2280 is on consent. I think it's because uh... Okay, I got it. All right. Okay, so uh, anything needs to be bumped off the consent calendar? <clears throat> All right, um, okay, so these are the bills on the consent resolution agenda. Uh, item number 13, RS 2023-2199 by Roten Benedict and Hurt. Resolution adopting annual salary increase for general officers and the sheriff of the Metropolitan Government. Item number 14, Roten and Welsh, RS 2023-2245. Resolution accepting grant from the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services to the Metropolitan Government through General Sessions Board for the provision of Tennessee Certified Recovery Court Programs to incorporate intensive judicial service and supervision and treatment services, sanctions, and incentives to address the needs of nonviolent offenders. Uh, item number 15 by Council Member Roden, RS 2023 2246. Resolution authorizing the adoption of rules, regulations, and forms to be used by the Metropolitan Government in the collection of the privilege tax at the National Museum of African American Music. Item number 17, RS 2023 2248 by Roden, Withers, Tombs, and others. A resolution declaring surplus and approving the disposition of certain parcels of real property in accordance with section 2.24.050G of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Item number 18, Tombs, House, House of Roten, and others, uh, RS 2023 2249, resolution declaring surplus and authorizing the convention of real property, certain nonprofit organizations, and authorizing grants not exceeding $3 million in the Barnes Fund for affordable housing to Awake Nashville Inc. for the express purpose of constructing affordable or workforce housing for older adults. Item number 19, BRS 2023 2250, House of Roten, Withers, and others, resolution declaring surplus and authorizing the convention of real property and certain nonprofit organizations authorizing grants not exceeding $634,000 from the Barnes Fund for affordable housing to certain nonprofit organizations. Item number 20, RS 2023 2251 by House of Roden and Welsh. Resolution authorizing grants not exceeding $9,647,269 from the Barnes Fund for Affordable Housing to certain nonprofit organizations selected for the express purpose of construction, rehabilitating affordable workforce housing. Item 21, RS 2023 2252, Roden Withers and Allen. Resolution approving an interlocal agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and the Health and Educational Facilities Board of the Metropolitan Government for Administrative Financial Legal Services for the Mixed income pilot program. Um, and then we jump over uh, to item number 29. RS 2023 2260 by Taylor and Roten. Resolution accepting a grant from the Centennial Park Conservancy to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Board of Parks and Recreation to provide funding for one part time position in the Parthenon Museum store. Uh, item number 30, RS 2023 2261 by Taylor and Roten. A resolution accepting an in kind grant from Nashville Youth Hockey League to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation to fund the purchase and installation of up to 20 door ramp graphics for the locker room and other doors on ranks A and B of the Centennial Sportsplex. Item number 31, RS 2023-2262, by Council Member wrote a resolution of the grant from the Friends of Warner Park to the Metropolitan Government through the Parks Board to continue funding staff positions and copier costs. Number 32, RS 2023-2263, by Council Member wrote a resolution of the grant from the Friends of Warner Park to the Metropolitan Government acting through the Board of Parks to provide seasonal staffing for the Special Work Education and Trails program at Warner's Park. Uh, RS 2023-2264, Lee and Roten, Resolution accepting in-kind grant for the Josie Davis Foundation, the Friends of Mill Real Park, to the Metropolitan Government, through the Metropolitan Board of Parks, for a planning study to determine the scope of work for Phase 2 of the Mill Ridge Park Master Plan. Item number 34, RS 2023, uh, 2265, Roten, Welsh, and Allen. Resolution accepting an in-kind grant from Greenways for Nashville to the Metropolitan Government through the Board, uh, Board of Parks to raise funds for improvements to 30 Greenway trailheads and sign sites on the Cumberland River, Mill Creek, Richland Creek, and Seven Mile Creek Greenways. Next item is item number 41, RS 2023-2272, uh, by Council Member Roten. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Bernie Cox against the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County in the amount of $80,000 set amount to be paid out of the self-insured liability fund. 
And the last thing I've got on the consent is RS 2023-2280. <clears throat> That's item number 49, Bradford House for Cash and, Cash and Others. Resolution declaring June 2023 as Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month in Nashville and Davidson County. Anything needs to be bumped off of the consent calendar? All right. <clears throat> Um, I need some committee reports. Uh, Council Member Hauser, you're first. Yes, affordable housing uh, reviewed RS 2023, 2249, 2250, and 2251. We approved all 7 4, 0 against, 0 abstention. All right, thank you, Council Member Hauser. Council Member Roten, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance approved 2023, 2199, 2245, 46, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, and 77. 15 in favor, zero against. You sound like J.O.N. Cooper with that. <laughs> All right. uh, government operations. I'm looking at Council Member Welsh. Who's got that one? You're standing up. Have you got a report? Oh, you're just stretching. All right. <clears throat> Council Member Withers, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. This is for 2199. This is for 2199. Um, the government operations recommended approval, seven in favor, zero against. All right, planning and zoning, Councilman Withers, just stay standing up. All right, um, planning and zoning met and considered RS 2023, 2248, 2249, and 2250, and also 2252, and we recommended approval of each of those, 10 in favor, zero against, zero abstention. All right, thank you, Public Facilities Council Member Hurt. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Public Facilities, Arts, and Culture voted Seven in favor, zero against for 2246, 2260. 2261, 2262, 2263, 2264, and 2265. All right. Uh, what, was the, what was the vote? Seven in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Uh, public Health and Safety, Council Member Syracuse. No report. No report. All right. Uh, Council Member Pulley, Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Transportation did not meet, so we have uh, no recommendations for the consent agenda, but I can move the uh, consent agenda. I got one more. Council Member Murphy has the last one. That's why I waited. Council yep. Member Murphy. Thank you. Um, 2279 with the amendment, 2280. You just have 2280. Okay. They were uh, four in favor, zero against, and with that, I move for approval. All right, so Council Member Murphy is moving approval of the resolution consent agenda. Properly seconded any discussion on the resolution consent agenda. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. All right, let's go back and pick up, <clears throat> and there's several because um, the committees were not able to meet. Let's make sure we've got them all. <clears throat> All right, the first one I've got is item number 22, RS 2023-2253 by Toombs, Roten, Syracuse, and Welsh. A resolution approving an application for a grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to the Metropolitan Government through General Services to fund the construction of the third floor at 1354 Brick Church Pike for the future Nashville Assessment Center. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. A budget and finance. Council Member Roten. Budget and finance approved 15 in favor, zero against. Uh, public health and safety. Council Member Syracuse. No report. All right, back to you, Council Member Toombs. Move for approval. Okay, Council Member Toombs has moved to approval of RS 2023-2253 properly. Seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Uh, Opposed, no, you adopt. Uh, uh, item number 23, RS 2023-2254 by Roden, Syracuse, and Welsh. <clears throat> it's a resolution approving a grant contract between the Metropolitan Government to the Board of Health and Meharry Medical College to train college students as peer health educators. <laughs> Councilman Roden, you rec uh, you're recognized on your bill. This is 2254, I'm sorry. 2254. Yes, um, uh, budget and Finance Committee report. We voted for approval. 15 in favor, zero against. All right. Public Health and Safety. Councilmember Syracuse, probably no report. No report. All right. Councilmember Roten. 
renew my motion. Okay, you move for approval of RS-2023-2254, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. We are on um, RS-2023-2255 by Council Member Roden, Syracuse, and Welsh. Resolution approving a limited revocable license agreement between the Metropolitan Government through the Board of Health and Kosika Community Development to create, operate, and maintain a community garden on the west side of the Woodbine Clinic. Councilman Roden, you're recognized on the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. At the request of the Health Department, uh, we voted 15 in favor, zero against for an indefinite deferral, and that was what the uh, approval for was for, indefinite deferral, 15 in favor, zero against. Okay, so you're moving to a defer indefinitely. Uh, public Health and Safety, Councilman Syracuse. No report. All right. So the motion is to defer indefinitely, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to defer indefinitely say aye. Opposed, no. You would, uh, that motion is adopted. RS 2023-2256 by Councilman Roten in Syracuse. Resolution approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Board of Health and Western Governors University to provide clinical experience opportunities for its students. Councilman Roten, you're recognized on your resolution. Move approval. Uh, moved approval. Budget and Finance Committee report. Voted 15 in favor, zero against. For public, health, public Health and Safety, no report. No report. All right. Councilman Roten has moved approval of RS 2023-2256, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Uh, item 26, RS 2023 2257, wrote in Syracuse and Welsh. Resolution approving Amendment 1 to a grant for the State of Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government, government through um, Metropolitan Board of Health to use available data to identify populations high risk for adverse consequences from substance abuse. Councilmember Roten, you're recognized on your resolution. Move approval, budget and finance voted 15 in favor, zero against for approval. All right, public health and safety. No report. All right, Councilmember Roten has moved approval of the resolution. Properly seconded. Any discussion on RS 2023 2257? Seeing none, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, resolution uh, is adopted. We're on item 27, RS 2023 2258 by Roden, Syracuse, Welsh, and Allen. Resolution approving Amendment 2 to a grant from a step ahead foundation in Middle Tennessee to the Metropolitan Government through the Board of Health provide reimbursement for certain costs associated with providing long acting reversible contraception. Councilman Roden, you're recognized on the resolution. Move approval, budget and finance approved, 15 in favor, zero against. All right, public health and safety. No report. All right, Councilman Roden has moved approval of RS 2023-2258, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of passes the resolution, RS 2023-2258. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt item 28, RS 2023 2259 by Councilman Roten, Syracuse, Welsh, and Hancock. Resolution providing Amendment 8 to a grant from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to the Metropolitan Government through the Board of Health for the ongoing collection of data on ambient air concentrations. Councilman Roten, you're recognized on your resolution. Move approval, budget and finance approved 15 in favor, zero against. Public health and safety. No report. All right. Councilman Roten uh, is moving approval of RS 2023 2259 uh, for passage properly seconded. Any discussion? Discussion on the resolution. Seeing none, all those in favor of RS 2023-2259 for passes say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, the next several were on consent. We're on item 35, RS 2023-2266 by Council Members Roten and Syracuse. Resolution accepting a Homeland Security Grant from TEMA to the Metropolitan Government through the Office of Emergency Management to implement state Homeland Security strategies to, by addressing the identified planning, equipment, training, and exercise needs required to prevent, respond to, and recover from acts of terrorism. Council Member Roten, you're recognized on your resolution. Move approval, budget and finance approved, 15 in favor, zero against. All right, public health and safety. No report. All right, Councilman Roten has moved approval of RS-2023-2266, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. We're on item 36, RS-2023-2267 by Councilman Roden and Syracuse. Resolution, uh, resolution accepting a grant from TEMA, acting through the Office of Emergency Management to provide resources for hazardous material preparedness. Councilman Roden, you're recognized on your resolution. Move approval. Budget and finance approved. 15 in favor, zero against. Council Member Syracuse, Public Health and Safety. No report. Council Member Roten uh, moves approval of RS-2023-2267 for passage properly seconded. Any discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. RS 2023-2268. It's item 37, Road in Syracuse and Allen. Resolution accepting a violent crime intervention fund grant for the Tennessee Department of Finance Administration Office of Criminal Justice Program to the Metropolitan Government through the Police Department to provide support to local law enforcement developing and implementing evidence-based strategies to combat violent crime. Uh, Councilmember Roten, you're recognized on your resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Move approval, budget and finance approved, 15 in favor, zero again. All right, uh, Council Member Syracuse, Public no. Health and Safety. No report. All right, Council Member Roden has moved approval of RS 2023-2268 for passage, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. Didn't have a budget. Opposed, no. You adopt RS 2023-2269, item number 38 by Council Member Roden. Resolution authorized the Metropolitan Department of Law Compromise Civil Claim of Tracy Evans as surviving spouse and next of kin of James Evans, deceased against the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, amount of $150,000. Council Member Roden, you're recognized on the resolution. <coughs> Move approval. Okay, uh, budget finance report. 15 in favor, zero against. All right. Councilman Roden has moved approval of RS 2023-2269 for passage. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. RS 2023-2270, item number 30, 39, Roden and Pulley. Resolution approving an application of regional infrastructure accelerator program grant from TDOT to the Metropolitan Government, acting through NDOT to develop and coordinate project staging financing for the multiple of transportation-related infrastructure projects. Council Member Roden, you're recognized on the resolution. Move approval, budget and finance approved, 15 in favor, zero again. All right, transportation infrastructure, Council Member Pulley. We had no recommendation, no meeting. All right, Council Member Roden has moved approval of RS 2023-2270 for passage properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 2270 for passage say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the resolution is adopted. Item number 40, RS 2023-2271 by Taylor Roten, Withers, and others. Resolution approving Amendment 5 to agreement by and between the State of Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Metropolitan Government National Davidson County through NDOT for improvements on Jefferson Street. Council Member Taylor, you're recognized on the resolution. Thank you. Committee reports, please. Uh, Council Member Roten, Budget and Finance. Budget and Finance approved 14 in favor, one against. Planning and Zoning, Council Member Withers. Planning and Zoning recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against, zero abstention. Transportation Infrastructure, Council Member Pulley. No recommendation. All right. Council Member Taylor. Thank you. Move for approval. Yours. Move for approval of RS 2023 2271 for passes properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. We're on item number 42, RS 2023-2273 by Roten and Pulley. Resolution accepting the terms of cooperative purchasing master agreement for Verizon Connect fleet management technology with related software solutions. Councilman Roten, you're recognized on the resolution. Move approval, budget and finance approved 15 in favor, zero against. All right, transportation infrastructure, Councilman Pulley. No recommendation. Councilman Roten has moved approval of RS 2023-2273 for passage, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 2273 for passes say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, item 43, RS 2023-2274, Rutherford, Roten, Withers, and Pulley. Resolution approving Supplement 1 to an intergovernmental agreement by and between the state of Tennessee uh, uh, through TDOT uh, and the Metropolitan Government acting through the Water and Sewer Services to construct PIN number 105766.02 SR11 at Snellisville Pike. Councilman Rutherford, you're recognized on your resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. Would it be easier to take 43 and 44 together? I would be happy to. RS 44, RS 2023, 2275. Resolution approving supplemental one to an intergovernmental agreement by and between the state of Tennessee, TDOT and NDOT, th uh, excuse me, not NDOT, Water and Sewer Services, to construct PIN number 105766.02, SR11, Nolansville Pike. <laughs> Councilman Rutherford, you're recognized on both those resolutions. Committee reports. Uh, budget and Finance, Council Member Roten. Budget and Finance approved both of them, 15 in favor, zero against. Planning and Zoning, Council Member Withers. Planning and Zoning recommended approval of both, 10 in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, Transportation, Council Member Pulley. No recommendation. All right, back to you, Council Member Rutherford, on both those resolutions. Move approval of both. All right, 2274 and 2275, Council Member Rutherford has moved approval of both, properly seconded. Any discussion on the two resolutions? Seeing none, uh, we're ready to vote on 2274 and 2275. All those in favor say aye. 
opposed. No, you adopt. Uh, item 45, RS 2023-2276 by Councilmember Roberts, Murphy, Roten, and Pulley. Resolution approving an agreement between the United States Department of the Army and the Metropolitan Government through Water and Sewer Services to provide relocation assistance for the Richland Creek Flood Risk Management Project in Davidson County. Councilmember Roberts, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Budget and Finance, Councilmember Roten. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance approved. 15 in favor, zero against. All right, Transportation, Councilmember Pulley. No recommendation. No recommendation. Councilmember Roberts, you're on your resolution. I'd like to move for approval. I move for approval. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed? No. You adopt. Uh, item 46, R is 2023-2277. By Roden and Polio, resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Government to enter into an agreement with Madison Suburban Utility District for reading and maintaining water consumption meters and disconnecting water service. Uh, Councilman Roden, you're recognized on your resolution. Move approval, budget and finance approved 15 in favor, zero against. All right, transportation, Councilmember Pulley. No recommendation. No recommendation. Councilman Roten has moved approval of RS 2023-2277. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, 2277 is adopted. Item 47, RS 2023-2278 by Councilmember Syracuse. Resolution amending ordinance number BL 2023-1690 to extend its effect effective date to October 1st, 2023. Councilmember Syracuse. I need to rec uh, I have to suspend the rules, I believe. Yeah, I think you have to suspend the rules because there is no committee report because transportation uh, didn't meet. Council Member Pulley? Uh, I'll say this, Mr. Vice Mayor, the sponsor came very prepared and he was ready and willing and we weren't able to afford him a committee meeting to make him a recommendation, so. All right, as long as he came prepared, that was good. All right, so Councilmember Syracuse, you need to move to suspend the rules. I move to suspend the rules. All right, so Councilmember uh, Syracuse is moving to suspend the rules to get this resolution heard tonight. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, rules are suspended. Councilmember Syracuse, you're on your resolution. Move approval with brief explanation. All right, so Councilmember Syracuse has moved approval of RS 2023-2278 for approval. Properly seconded, back to you. We are working with the home builders uh, to amend the stormwater impact fee that uh, was passed uh, some months ago. And so the uh, uh, agreement is that we are going to uh, delay implementation to October 1. Move approval. Councilmember Syracuse has moved uh, approval of RS 2023-2278. Again, properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. Opposed, no. Resolution is adopted. We're on item 48, RS 2023-2279 by Allen and Murphy. Resolution commemorating the 50th uh, year anniversary of the first full meeting of the Metropolitan Council to be aired on live television. It was a long time ago. Council Member Allen, you're recognized on the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would like to uh, move approval and amend it. Move an amendment. Uh, let's get a rules and, and confirmation. Council Member Murphy. RS. Uh, four in favor, zero against, as amended. All right, thank you. Councilmember Allen. Thank you. So the, the amendment just corrects a typo and um, gets Luann Grandinetti's name right. And um, and because we are honoring the fact that, that she was one of the first ones to do that, we want to do that right. So I would uh, move, move approval of the amendment. All right, so Councilmember uh, Allen is moving an amendment to correct a typo properly. Seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, oh, wait a minute, Councilmember Bradford. Oh, as amended, uh, Councilmember Swope. Okay, so, um, uh, okay, so we're just on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Um, so, uh, Councilmember Allen, you're on your resolution as amended. Thank you, I would like to move approval with the brief explanation and also invoke the Murphy rule to get everyone to sign on because this is, this is a big deal and we are gonna present it this is acknowledging the fact that what uh, Pat Nolan has bravely been doing uh, for several years now actually started 50 years ago and it's a great tradition and we, we wanna honor that. All right, so Council Member Allen is moving RS 2023-2279 as amended, properly seconded, and we have discussion. Council Member Bradford, during we come back to you, Council Member Swope. Thank you. Um, since this seems like a pretty self-serving resolution, who is this actually getting presented to? Oh. Council Member uh, Allen? 
Sorry, we will present it to Ms. Grandinetti. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I, I, right. I sound like a stupid fresh. <laughs> any other, <laughs> any other discussion? We're on uh, RS 2023 2279 as amended uh, for passage. On the wall. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the resolution as amended say aye. Aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Uh, okay, so we are, Sorry, uh, that sir. completes the, con okay. the resolutions. We have four late resolutions. Okay. First one is a, a resolution appropriating a total of $501,444.80 from a certain account of the Community Safety Fund for a grant to the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee. Councilmember Syracuse, you're recognized on your resolution. Committee reports, please. All right. Uh, you want to get, did you, uh, it's I a late to, file? I need to suspend the rules. Okay. You got a rules committee or? I did. Okay. Councilmember Murphy, uh, rules committee report. Um, thank you. This came before us and we were okay with it. Okay. <laughs> well, I just, I guess on some of these, there were, I'm sorry, this is this off. I guess this would be a point of order. I guess it would be nice to have staff or the administration confirm um, with us that, that this is money, this and some of the other ones have to be spent by the first. I'm just kind of surprised how many came before us today that have to be done by, I mean, this one not as much, but like the other ones, they have a lot of money, so. All right, all right, okay, thank you for all that. Um, let me figure out what I need to do with Councilmember Syracuse. Do you wanna suspend the rules? I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I know it's late. Councilmember Syracuse is moving to suspend the rules to get this resolution heard tonight. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? Being none, the rules were suspended. Councilmember Syracuse, you're on your resolution. No, I need committee reports, correct? Now you need committee reports. Thanks. Budget and Finance, Councilmember Roden. Uh, budget and Finance approved 15 favors, you're against. And Public Health and Safety. I got nothing. Move you, approval. You got nothing. All right, Councilmember Syracuse is moving approval of the resolution properly. Seconded discussion on the resolution. Councilmember Murphy. You're if we could just have that confirm, I mean, I believe the sponsor. I'm just, uh, yes. I'm just a little shocked on some of these that there's, there's this much money and and it's coming to us late and these things have to be brought. You know, s this money has to be spent. So, Councilor Syracuse, <laughs> thank you, Vice Mayor. This I does was asking need the administration. Oh. Uh, Mr. Jamison. Thank you, Council Member. The, this is the partnership with the Community Foundation for Professional Services Development for nonprofits that don't have otherwise the resources for audit purposes and grant writing skills. The, the funding is sufficient and uh, we're seeking approval. I, Councilor Murphy. But to be more clear, there, this one, there was the one that um, <coughs> the, with the, the 2.9 million for after school programs, I'm just shocked that we're at the end of the fiscal year and these are large sums of money that seemingly forgot to be allocated. So so that was more of my concern and what I was asking to be addressed by the administration to just confirm that this is just money that was forgot, forgotten to be spent. I can't I'm speak for the library. I doubt they have a representative here, but I don't know about their application. Mr. Syracuse can. Uh, Council Member Syracuse. This is for the Mayor's Office of uh, Community Safety. The timing of the grants getting the uh, dollar amount and the uh, actual account that it was gonna come from uh, took a little longer. It was filed on June 9th, but just after the noon deadline. Okay. Council Member Murphy, anything else? Sounds like it was an administration thing, but, but that's okay. We'll let the administration library sort it out later. All right. All right, um, we're back. We have a motion to approve this slate file resolution by Council Member Syracuse. Again, it was properly seconded. Any other discussion? Ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Resolution is adopted. Council Member Hurt, you're next. It's a, a, a resolution appropriating a total of $2,938,965 from the Nashville Public Library to various nonprofit organizations for the provision of free and high quality after school, after school and summer programming. Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I move uh, suspension of the rules. Please. All right. Council Member Murphy, uh, this one come before you guys? Same, yes. Okay. All right. So Council Member Hurt is uh, moving uh, to suspend the rules to get this one before us tonight. Any objections? to suspension of the rules. Seeing none, rules were suspended. You're on your resolution. Committee report, please. Uh, budget and Finance, Council Member Roten. Council 
Councilmember Roten. Lay filed. Councilmember Hertz. Apologize. 15 in favor, zero against. All right. Public facilities, Councilmember Hertz, that's yours. Yeah, public facilities voted seven in favor and zero against. And with that, I move for approval. All right. Councilmember Hertz has moved for approval of this late file resolution, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Nope. Resolution's adopted. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Syracuse, back to you. This is a resolution accepting a direct appropriation grant for the Tennessee Department of Health uh, to the Metropolitan Government through the Board of Health, implementing coordinate activities and uh, services related to HIV, STI, prevention, testing, diagnosis, treatment, and surveillance. Council Member Syracuse, you are recognized. Move to suspend the rules, please. <laughs> Council Member Murphy. This one come before you guys? Yes, it did. And I believe we were okay with it. Yes. Okay. Uh, Council Member Syracuse, I've got committee reports, budget and finance, Council Member Roten. Budget and finance approved 14 in favor, zero against, and one abstention. All right. And public health and safety, Council Member Syracuse, you no, all didn't meet? No report. Move uh, approval, brief explanation. All right, motion to approve, properly seconded, back to you. Thank you, so the health department was waiting on the Tennessee Department of Health and then the timing of the uh, uh, the grant application or whatnot, it, it, so the rules needed to be suspended because of the timing of the, the grant uh, application and they do need to get this in, so obviously this is a critical work, so move approval. All right, so uh, Councilmember Syracuse has moved approval. Did I get the suspension of the rules? Do we need that one? I got that one already. All right, move to suspend the rules. Move to suspend the rules. Any objections to suspend the rules? Seeing none, rules are suspended. Councilmember Syracuse, you're on your resolution and you've moved it. Move right. approval, thank you. Moved approval, properly seconded. Any discussion on the late file resolution? Seeing none, all those in favor of the late file resolution say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Resolution's adopted. We're on the last late file resolution by- I need to abstain. Oh, and you need to abstain, right? Councilmember Hurd abstains on that late file resolution by Councilmember Syracuse. All right, uh, last late file resolution is by Councilmember Sawara. Resolution recognizing the 15th anniversary of Southern Word. Councilmember Sawara, you are recognized on your late file resolution. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to suspend the rules. All right, it went to rules. Councilmember Murphy? We are okay. All right, Council Member Suar is moving to suspend the, the rules to get this one before us tonight. Any objections? Seeing none, the rules are suspended. You're on your resolution. Uh, thank you, committee reports. Uh, you've got rules and confirmations, Council Member Murphy. <coughs> uh, we were four in favor, zero against. All right, back to you, Council Member Suara. Uh, thank you, uh, move for approval with a brief comment. Uh, uh, so the motion is to approve, properly seconded, back to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, this resolution actually honors the Southern World is an organization that's been around for 15 years. They've uh, helped about 7,500 uh, kids in 40 schools. Uh, one of my favorite poet laureate, Laura Young, is, was a member, went on to be uh, one of our, our state poet laureate and a finalist as a national poet laureate. And so they've produced a lot of uh, spoken word artists, uh, engage a lot of kids, uh, and this resolution is celebrating the 15 years uh, of this organization engaging children uh, and, and giving arts uh, 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 in our schools. So with that, I ask for your approval. So, um, Council Member Swar is uh, asking for approval of the resolution, properly seconded. Council Member Stiles. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I want to thank the sponsor for bringing forth this resolution. And I have two questions. One, can I be added as a co-sponsor? And I also want to know, can we ask about the Murphy rule on this particular resolution as well? As long as it's okay with Council Member Swar, it's okay with everybody. Yes, please. Okay. Excellent. Well, Thank you. Right. Um, Southern Word actually is a, a featured partner with our um, citywide MLK Day festivities, and every year the Poet Laureate is featured, and they're an amazing organization that gives children a wonderful voice. So this is a wonderful organization to support, and I'm really happy that we're recognizing them. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. All right. Um, Council Member Porterfield, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I also just want to uh, stand in support, recognizing Southern Word. 
uh, their executive director, Benjamin Smith, was here with us tonight. Um, but unfortunately, uh, as the hours grew long, he had to uh, leave out. Um, but he did want to extend his uh, thankfulness to the body for doing this. Um, I also wanted to say back before council, when I was still in the classroom, um, I had many instances where Southern Word came out to my classroom and worked with my students and taught, uh, taught students. So I've seen firsthand the work that they do in the community and I'm very thankful. Um, and then Vice Mayor, I also had a question. Why does it say Allen instead of Soror? <laughs> I noticed that too. I noticed that too. I crossed out Allen because I went and looked at the resolution. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right. That's uh, I, that's I looked at the same thing and I immediately threw the agenda on the floor. I just didn't know what to do. I think it's supposed to be Soror Porterfield, but thank you, Vice Mayor. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So, um, Council Member Sora has moved for approval, properly seconded. We're using the Murphy rule. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. Opposed? No. Uh, resolution's adopted. <clears throat> We're now on bills on introduction and first reading. Um, item number 55, BL 2023 1995, is automatically deferred to uh, the first meeting in July, so it will not be on first reading. Um, anything else needs to be dumped on, uh, bumped off of first reading? Anything else needs to come off the calendar? All right, uh, Council Member Swope, entertain a motion to approve everything on bills on introduction first reading. Motion properly seconded. Uh, all those bills with the exception of item number 55 uh, are up for passage on introduction first reading. All those in favor of the, res of, uh, the motion to approve everything on introduction first reading say aye. aye. Um, uh, opposed, no. Bills on introduction first reading pass. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I got it. Okay, we are now on bills on second reading. Um, there's a five on consent, um, mainly because of um, our problems with it that we didn't have. <coughs> uh, we didn't have the safety uh, committee meeting or transportation. Uh, these are bills on second reading consent. Be all 2021-920 is on consent. 1885 is on consent, 1886 is on consent, 1889 is on consent, and 1890 is on consent. Yeah, Councilmember Johnson. Is there any way we could suspend the rules? I know we have these things that are not on consent because we don't have either public safety or transportation committee reports, but we do have a budget, I mean, is there, can we suspend the rules to get some of this stuff back on so that we can maybe move this along faster? Just seems very, uh... Now, I've been trying to figure out how we do this so that um, we don't have to slow back down and go through every bill on second reading. Most of these things are, would normally be on consent. I'm wondering if committee reports actually need to be read anyway. Councilmember uh, Johnston, say it again. I'm just wondering if if committee reports actually need to be read anyway. So if we, I mean, if we have at least one with budget and fine, can we just move on? Uh, Director Darby. I mean, you could suspend the rules. The rules call for, um, well, one, the rule calls for uh, all items on third reading to have had a committee report at some point. Um, but the rules also call for um, items to only be allowed to be on consent if they've been to a committee and all the committees that they've been assigned to have approved them on consent or you Can I suspend that rule, please? Um, if somebody wants to pull something off of consent, that's that's fine, but I, I think that if there's if nobody has any objection to to any of these things, then we we should just suspend the rules to move on and put everything on consent. All right. <clears throat> so, um, Council Member Johnston is moving to suspend the rules so that everything is on consent. Uh, then we would ask if anything needs to come off of consent. Is there any objection to suspending the rules? We need to make sure that the items that... <clears throat> um, I think the idea is that we would put everything on second, but then, then what you all need to do is look through 
second reading, uh, because I think at least, um, Councilman Rosenberg, you may have one bill that you're getting ready to bump off of consent. Yes. Yeah, so what we would do is, according to what Councilmember Johnston is asking, everything is on consent, um, and then we would just go through and make sure if something needs to be bumped off, we would bump it off, okay? Uh, that's what Councilmember Johnston is asking for. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? <clears throat> okay, um, I'm going to go. Th I'm going to just go through every one real quick. <clears throat> These are built on second reading. Everything is on second reading consent. <clears throat> I'm gonna read the captions. If something needs to come off, just let me know, all right? Um, item 64, BL 2021-920 by Murphy and Nash. Ordinance authorized Metron government to ban existing sanitary sewer mains and easements and uh, accept new ones at 5540 Oakmont Circle and 262 and 264 White Bridge Pike. Okay, um, BL 2023-1740, Councilman Rosenberg, um, on consent or off? Off. Off consent, okay. Um, item number 66, Council Member O'Connell, on consent or off? Off. On, okay, so BL 2023-18. Oh wait, sorry. Uh, okay. I'm, uh, 1882, item 66 comes off of consent. BL 2023 1885 by Council Member Syracuse, ordinance to amend section 10.60.050 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to amend an alarm registration display requirement. Stays on. Okay, BL 2023, 1886 by Hurt and Welsh. Ordinance to amend, uh, amending chapters 11.22 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Require landlords to provide certain older persons 60 days notice of termination of tenancy for purposes of eviction. Um, Council Member Hurt stays on. Consent? Okay. Uh, item number 69, BL 2023-1887 by Rutherford, Pulley, Hancock, and others. Ordinance amending ordinance number BL 2021-594. Authorized lowering the speed limit on streets as in local streets on the major and collector street plan within the general services district from 30 miles to 25 miles per hour. That's Rutherford, Pulley, Hancock, and others. Stays on. <coughs> Bill 2023-1889, item number 70, Murphy, Roten, Porterfield, and Sawara, ordinance approving a lease agreement by and between the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Board of Education and State of Tennessee on behalf of the National State Community College. Uh, item number 71, Bill 2023-1890, Roten and Hauser, ordinance adopting the five-year consolidated plan and 2023 action plan for housing and community development, authorize the Metropolitan Mayor to submit the consolidated plan, 2023 action plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Item number 72, Bill 2023-1893 by Syracuse, Hancock, and others. Ordinance approving an agreement between the Metropolitan Government acting through the Office of Family Safety and Caravan Studios to participate in the Safe Shelter Collaborative that addresses quick identification of mainly available and survivor-appropriate shelter. Uh, Bill 2023-1895 by House of Roten and others. Ordinance authorizing the granting of a permanent utility easement to Piedmont Natural Gas, certain property owned by the Metropolitan Government. Uh, item 74, Bill 2023-1896. <coughs> uh, by Parker, Withers, Roden, and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the acquisition of certain rights of way, easement, and property rights by negotiation or condemnation for the use of the Metropolitan Government of National Davidson County, I'm acting by and through NDOT right. in connection with the public project described as early acquisition of, of ROW to include six parcels for phase one north, south artillery boulevard between Spring Street and Woodland Street. That's Parker, Withers, Roten, and others. Uh, BL 2023, 1897 by Hancock, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance to amend the GIS system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government of National Davidson County, betting a portion of Pawnee Trail unimproved right away. Hancock, Withers, and Pulley sponsors. BL 2023, 1898, item 76, Evans, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government of National Davidson County to accept new public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements, probably located at 840 Old Lebanon Dirt Road. BL 2023, 1898, by Taylor Withers and Pulley. Warrants author in Metropolitan Government to accept the relocation and replacement of public water mains, probably located at 401 Clay Street. A BL 2023. 
uh, 1900, wrote in Withers and Polio, or in its authorized Metro Montgomery, except new public water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, sanitary sewer manhole, manholes and easements, property located at 3739 Hoggett Ford Road, also known as the Resort at Magnolia Farm. Uh, BL 2023 1901, Sledge, Withers and Pulley, ordinance authorized the Metro Montgomery to abandon existing public storm sewer, pipelines and easements, property located at 2212 12th Avenue South. BL 2023 1902, wrote in Withers and Pulley, ordinance authorized the Metro Montgomery to accept new public sanitary sewer main, sanitary ma sewer manholes and easements, property located at 3507 Central Pike. <laughs> BL 2023 1903, Syracuse Withers and Pulley. Okay. Ordinance authorizes the Metro government to accept the relocation of existing public fire hydrant assembly for property located at 433 Opry Mills Drive. <coughs> BL 2023 1904, Tombs Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorizes the Metro government to accept new public sanitary sewer manhole easements for two properties located at 1011 1013 West Trinity Lane. BL 2023 1905, Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorizes the Metro government to accept new public sanitary sewer main. Sensor sewer manhole property located at 1219 11th Avenue. North. BL 2023 1906, Withers and Pulley. Item number 84. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to accept public new sanitary sewer force main rehabilitation of existing sanitary sewer manholes for four properties located on Rural Hill Road, Mount View Road, and Highlander Drive. BL 2023 1907, Bradford, Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to accept new public water and sanitary sewer mains and sanitary sewer manholes. Property located at 1287 Curry Road, also known as the Beba Subdivision. BL 2023 1908, Tombs, Van Rees, and others. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to ban existing public sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, and to accept new public sanitary sewer mains and sanitary sewer manholes. A property is located on Ewing Drive, Dixon Pike, and Ben Allen Road. BL 2023 1909, Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new public water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements. Two properties located at 50, 5991 and 5997 Edmonds and Pike. And BL 2023 1909, 10, Porterfield, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government uh, to accept new public sanitary sewer mains and adjustments to sanitary sewer manholes for property located at 455 Rule Hill Road, also known as Edgel Lake Center Sewer Improvements. Um, that is everything on the consent. It sounds like we bumped off two bills, uh, both by Councilmember, one by Councilmember Rosenberg and one by Councilmember O'Connell. Um, let's get uh, committee reports on everything. <coughs> uh, so planning and zoning. I've got. Uh, I've got affordable housing. Council Member Hauser, um, you're recognized. Yes, uh, affordable housing looked at BL 2023-1886 and 1890. We approved seven in favor, zero against, zero abstaining. All right, Council Member Roden, Budget and Finance. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget 2023-1889, uh, 1890, 1895, and 1896 were all approved. 15 in favor, zero against. All right, Councilmember Sawara, education. You've got 1889. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, education voted five in favor, zero against, zero uh, abstention on uh, BL 2023-1889. All right, Councilmember Benedict, government operations. Thank you, Vice Mayor. BL 2023-1885, we voted seven in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Councilmember Withers, planning and zoning. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning considered BL 2021-920 as well as all of the items bill 2023, 1895 through 1910. And we recommended approval of each of those 10 in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, thank you. Everything else is public health and transportation infrastructure. There's no committee reports. Committee reports, but the ones that did not get a committee report will have to go back to committee unless those rules were suspended. All right, all right, so uh, let me uh, let uh, Director Darby explain on both public health and safety and transportation. Councilmember Johnston, listen to this, okay. Uh, Director Darby. There are a few items that only went to one committee and that was public health and safety or transportation. Neither one of those met. Either the rules need to be suspended for those committee reports or those items will go to, back to committee for third reading. Councilmember Johnston, you're recognized. So I would 
they go to third reading, refer to the committees for third reading and, and send move it back along. to the committee. Yep, and move along. Okay, sounds good. All right, um, then I need a uh, motion to approve um, items on the second reading consent agenda with the understanding that anything that didn't get to a committee would be referred to that appropriate committee on third reading. Okay, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Councilmember Allen? <laughs> On this, okay. Um, that's the motion. Uh, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those no. Uh, the motion is adopted. All right, we have two bills on second reading that we have to pick up. Uh, item number 65, BL 2023-1740, Rosenberg, Evans, and Stiles, ordinance amending section 11.12.080, Metropolitan Code of Laws related to the discharge of weapons. Councilmember Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to amend this to allow fireworks after the meeting tonight. <laughs> So moved. Withdraw. Withdraw. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, item number 66, BL 2023-1882 by Councilmember O'Connell, Welsh, Allen, and others. Ordinance created Chapter 2.153 of the Metropolitan Code of Law, <laughs> establishing a bicycle pedestrian advisory commission. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move for a one meeting deferral with brief comment. All right. I've got committee reports in, public facilities. Councilmember Hurt. Public facilities took no action. All right, and transportation also took, took no recommendation. All right, Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Really disappointed in the committee, um, <laughs> but wanted to just acknowledge uh, I've heard from Councilmember Allen and had some contact with uh, Representative Greenways. We do want to make sure when the original Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee uh, existed Greenways was an active part of that. We just want to make sure that uh, they are satisfied uh, both within parks and with the commission that uh, this has appropriate language. So I'm counting on Councilmember Allen to uh, bring what I will consider a friendly amendment to the table between meetings here and we'll resume in two weeks. All right, so uh, the deferral is in um, for his one meeting deferral. One meeting. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the one meeting deferral? Seeing none, all those in favor of the one meeting deferral say aye. 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 Those no. Uh, that one's deferred one meeting. I think that took care of everything on second reading. <clears throat> we are on third reading. Um, we have just a couple of bills on consent. BL 2023 1711 is on consent. Hmm. Councilmember Parker. Is Councilmember Parker here or is he? Oh, have you signed on to it? Okay. Let me get the other bills on consent. Just 93. Um, so we, we passed 1868. Passed that. Um, BL 2023 1892 is on consent. Okay. okay. Two bills we've already passed. Yeah. So we have two bills on consent. Uh, BL 2023-1711 by Councilmember Parker and Withers. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code by canceling the institutional overlay for various properties <coughs> west of Gallatin Avenue, north of Douglas Avenue, located within the Nashville Auto Diesel College Institutional Overlay District. <laughs> And then BL 2023-1892 by Councilmember O'Connell and Roten. Ordinance to provide for the designation of public property within specified areas of downtown Nashville as a temporary special event zone during the time period between nine, beginning at 9 o'clock p.m. on July 2nd, 2023, ending at 11.59 11, p.m. on July 5th, 2023, relative to the use of these areas in conjunction with the 2023 July 4th celebration related activities and events. Uh, both those bills are on consent. All the committee reports are in. Councilmember Mendes moves approval of the third reading consent agenda. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those no. Third reading consent agenda passes. I need to have the Urban Caucus, Urban Council, uh, meet right here after the meeting. That is Councilmember Mendes, Councilmember Allen, and Councilmember Toombs. Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. <coughs> Properly seconded. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. We stand adjourned. <laughs>
And so the Metro Council has concluded by the clock a little over a six hour meeting, but the council actually got started about 45 minutes late because it was still in committees at that time. I backed up in one sense because yesterday was a, a holiday in the Budget Finance Committee, which normally would do the budget prep for the uh, substitute budget, was not able to be in the courthouse to do that. Um, and so therefore, uh, all the committees were held today and it, 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 it limited the council to some degree with other committees because of them they could not meet because they were some tied up in the budget committee and the budget amendments. The highlight tonight was the approval of the council of the new uh, operating budget and tax levy for the for the county. Uh, the budget takes effect on July 1st. Uh, the uh, tax levies also take effect at that time. The property tax levies for both the urban service and the general services are not changed from the previous years. The operating budget is about $3.2 billion. That's up about 6% from the current spending plan for Metro. Much of that increase will go to schools and for additional public safety employees. Budget also from Mayor Cooper provided a 4% cost of living adjustment and a 3% step raises for <laughs> Metro employees, particularly in their early years in Metro. Uh, that includes some of Metro public school employees. Um, those play pads for them were also approved and that's where the major change was made in the budget. We're adding that extra 2% in. So now that the cost of living raise across the board will be 6% for Metro employees, one of the larger ones in recent years, but then inflation has been larger than it has been in recent years. Uh, the council um, always makes its own changes to the budget. They made some additional ones there uh, as well. The Civil Service Commission actually recommended a 7% uh, cost of living increase. So they got pretty close to that, taking it up as far as they did. There were some increases in the Barnes Fund allocation to WeGo, to the arts and schools. Uh, there's also some talk about providing additional money to buy a significant building downtown, the, uh, the Morris Building uh, for the city to be used perhaps for a civil rights uh, museum. Uh, the problem was that uh, they were going to use some 4% money to do that. 4% money is usually used for equipment purchases and for um, repairs and, and things like within buildings, not to make capital uh, expenditures. A lot of councilmen in favor of doing it, but just didn't seem to work out at this point. There was going to be $6 million to buy the building. There are some other uh, renovation things that have to be done to make the building habitable again to be used. And it was also perhaps going to be used for Metro. I think that may happen in the future, but uh, the chances that's not going to be in the budget, at least for right now. And we'll see what happens if anything can get done by this council because they're down to just a few meetings to find some extra money to do that. It may have to be in the next capital plan that is submitted. That's not likely to come from Mayor Cooper as he goes out of office, but that'll be up perhaps on the desk for the new mayor to consider whoever he or she may be. Uh, the council had also another a, no, a number of amendments that it did not pass. They were withdrawn or defeated to uh, make either uh, flat budgets for police sheriffs and some other departments. Uh, also for many in the criminal justice budget, there were going to be pretty big size cuts, but those, again, as I said, were either defeated by the in committee and then withdrawn on the floor or they were uh, uh, withdrawn within committee. Uh, the council also considered a number, a large number of Metro Board Commission's appointments as well as position the council had to fill by election. Uh, particularly, there was one that they wanted to fill tonight, which was one that uh, filled a seat within the state legislature. Uh, former council member Anthony Davis is the person now who is going to be taking a temporary appointment to go to the state legislature. He'll be replacing uh, uh, Bill Beck, who passed away uh, suddenly and, and unexpectedly from a heart attack a couple of weeks ago. The reason for the appointment now, even though normally the legislature is out of session, is because they may be coming back in the session for a special session called by Governor Lee to talk with, about gun issues. That will be coming up in the middle of August. There is a special election to fill Representative uh, Beck's seat for the rest of his term that's being held along with the city election on August 4th and September 14th, but that won't be completed until, uh, uh, won't be done before the, the special session's held, so they felt like the need to go ahead and make that a point for Anthony Davis uh, in, in, in effect before the special election is held. He will serve in that position until the election is done, either, and either he'll either stay there because he's been elected and appointed by the people or because uh, somebody else has been elected and that person will take over to serve at for the rest of the term. Uh, the council elections tonight were from a number of different boards and agencies, but had most of the time doing this on the new Nashville Music, Film, and Entertainment Commission. Uh, they very, fairly quickly, the council went through the appointments that came from the mayor and from other uh, industry groups that were involved, but they had to get into a couple of at-large uh, seats on there, and there were a couple different resolutions that had as many as 
has 10 or 11 nominations for three or four seats. The council went through some hand votes for that for several minutes. They had to get 21 votes to get appointed, and that took quite a bit of time. It probably spent about an hour and a half or so just to try to get that done tonight. They did get those all done, but uh, it was not the easiest thing in the world to do uh, in terms of how long it took to go through that particular process. The council also approved some supplemental appropriations tonight, uh, $4.3 million to the sheriff's department and $6.5 million to schools. That would give them, uh, the schools in particular, more money for uh, security things. The council's been holding a number of meetings in the last couple of weeks trying to figure out exactly what they need to do to bolster security after what happened with the Covenant uh, shootings that went on. The money for the sheriff's department is for overtime and for security uh, services. Uh, there's also an in-kind grant the council approved tonight for, for that came from Greenways of Nashville. It's worth about $270,000. It will go to improvements to 30 different Greenway trailheads and signage sites across the city, the Cumberland River, uh, 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 Greenway, Mill Creek, Richland Creek, and the Seven Mile uh, Creek Greenway. Also, the, the council approved uh, two grants, accepted those of $450,000 from Tennessee Emergency Management. It will go through the Metro Office of Emergency Management. One of the grants is for resource, uh, per, is for hazmat preparation. It requires a local grant of about $25,000. The other grant is for $350,000 with no local grant to help implement state homeland security strategies to, address, to identify planning, equipment, training, and exercise needs to prevent, respond to, and recover from acts of terrorism. In transportation, the council approved a Metro applying for a $4 million grant from the state, and if approved, the grant would be used to develop and coordinate staging and finance for a multitude of transportation and related infrastructure projects that are in development not only here in Davidson County, but would impact the entire Middle Tennessee reasons. On memorializing resolutions, the council commemorated the 50th anniversary upcoming for the first full meeting of the Metro Council to be aired on live television from gavel to gavel. That happened on July 3rd, 1973. The council also declared June of this month as Alzheimer's Brain Awareness Month in Nashville and a late resolution honored the 15th anniversary of the Southern Word publication. Then the late resolution also allocated almost $3 million to the Metro Public Libraries to work with about 19 different nonprofit agencies to operate summer reading and other kind of out of school programs that will begin the next month. Uh, the council also uh, approved a bill on first reading tonight that would reconstruct the, sitters, the city that was voter approved, the community oversight board, after a new state law effectively uh, stripped the current board of any kind of its investigative powers. By the way, the controversial renovation of the, of the National Speedways at the fairgrounds was also up for first reading again, but because the council rules they cannot consider major projects that are funded by any kind of bonds, particularly revenue bonds, that's not allowed during the budget process. We were still doing the budget process tonight, so uh, they were not, so that will now be coming again up on third reading. This will be the third time it's been on third reading. This time it probably will be approved so we can go into committees. That will happen on the council meeting that comes up on July 6th. Um, the council also uh, was looking at a bill to uh, regulate the discharge of, of gun in the general services district. Uh, that bill was withdrawn tonight, and the Bicycle and Pedestrian Safety Advisory Commission was uh, deferred by the council member to, for one meeting, so it will be coming up again on the July 6th meeting. Council also approved on second reading a bill that would require landlords to provide persons 55 years and older a 60-day notice of a termination of their tenancy, uh, if particularly that the project where they live is being it's being sold or, the, or they have to leave to make way for new property development. In the area of slowing down traffic uh, in the residential areas, a, a bill that was passed on second reading tonight would lower the speed limit. Right now it's already been lowered from 25 to 30 in the urban services area on the major and street collector plan. This will be taking down to uh, streets throughout local streets throughout the general services uh, district with a cost of about $60,000 for new signs. The council is now in recess until the 6th of July. You'll notice that's a that's a Thursday. Normally the council meets on the first Tuesday of the month, but of course July 4th is a holiday, so that's when the council will meet on July on July the 6th. We'll be here at that time to revive live coverage. Until then, I'm Pat Mullen, and good night from the council chambers. Tonight's meeting of the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council has been coming to you live from the council chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's been a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.